Yo, what up, everybody? What's going on? Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's go. Welcome to another edition of the Extra Point Season Two, Episode Two. We're here. I'm your boy, the Big Dog. That's Rich Smoke right there, and Be Shula, aka Zordon. <laughs> In the house, my man. How everybody doing today, man? I hope everybody's doing great, man. Uh, we got another kick-ass show for you guys today. We got special guests. We're gonna bring it on later on, maybe probably just in a few minutes. But uh, I'd like to um, thank all of you viewers. Um, that's going to be a part of this show now and later. Um, we ask for you guys uh, to like, um, react, comment in the, in the comment section. We love to interact with the uh, viewers. So as y'all come in, uh, go ahead and uh, chat in the uh, comment section. If you guys have good questions, we can answer at the appropriate time and the appropriate manner, man. But other than that, man, welcome, welcome, welcome. What up, Rich Smoke? How you doing, man? Man, it's good to be back. I was supposed to be here last week, but, you know, I was chilling on the beach, listening to the waves crash, so I'm not tripping. <laughs> Glad you enjoyed your vacation. Hey, be sure what you got going on, man. Everything good? Oh, Dog, let me tell you, I had to do all kinds of shit today. Uh, <laughs> I wish I could say I'm really totally prepared for this show, and I'm excited, but I'm just not that prepared right now. But hold on, <laughs> I'm going to get to you. Yeah, I'm going to get to you. Why he get himself together, man, we'd like to welcome you guys again, man. Go ahead and uh, share, like, like I said, um, tag people in here. Let them know we got a great show for you guys today. Show y'all don't want to miss, man. So make sure y'all stay right here on the extra point, man. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're going to get the tickers uh, up. Uh, shout out to Kevin. I know he's happy about his uh bills on Thursday. We'll be talking about that a little bit, a little bit later in the show. So, uh, we're gonna figure about you, uh, Kevin. Um, so what I'd like to do right now is we're gonna introduce our, our guest of this show, man, because it's already about him today. He's a Dollar Steelers fan. He also has his own podcast called the Triple B Experience, man. I love watching him, man. He's great, enthusiastic. He has great energy, man. He brings, man. We love it, man. So, we decided to bring him on to the show because we was blessed to be on his show. So, this time we're gonna do him a favor and put him on our show. So, let's go ahead and bring up. Bubba Brew from the Triple B Podcast. Welcome, guys. Thank you. I'm so I'm so hey. excited and I'm so pumped. And and Big Dog, I, I appreciate that shout out. And when I had you guys on my show, it was one of the most successful shows I had on the uh, Triple B Black and Gold Dynasty oh. show. And I'm here for football you. because it's that weekend, guys. And I know you guys are all excited. I'm excited. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Most definitely, man. You know how we do, man, man. We're glad to have you. Blessed to have you on there. Glad you took some time of your busy day, busy day to come on the Extra Point, man. Thank you so much. So Thank we do you. appreciate that, man. Very happy to have so you. Like, it's like everybody's seen the – oh, we got one more uh, guest we're going to bring on. It's one of our staff members from the NFL group page. We got, uh, we're going to bring Robert up here. Robbie up here. Excuse me. Robbie, what's going on, man? Hey, what's going on, guys? How you doing? Everything good, man. Everything good, man. So good? Everybody's in a good mood, man. Everybody uh got through another crazy week of work, man. Whatever you got going on. I know I had a crazy week this week, man, but we're making it, man. So uh so like everybody about ready to go? Be sure yeah, we get to go. Yeah. Yeah. All right, y'all. So we're gonna get right to we're gonna get to our five bet video of the week. Let's go and give it to him. Jackson drops it and pull up. Almost makes the interception. Back they fly on the field as if he did. I thought it hit the ground. But Romano is still on his feet. He's able to shake free from three hits and still going. Now he falls on his own. People will have to examine this and see if it's a pick. Unbelievable. What a catch. Wow. He got his hand underneath there. You just scoop it up. Just. I tried to watch the flatback video of the week. Troy Palmolo's amazing one hand in the section. Bubba Brew, how you feel about that, man? What do you think about I, that play, man? Well, I love it being a Steeler fan and seeing Troy brings back memories when I was a season ticket holder. And any type of Troy Palmolo play brings back that time of great Steeler teams. Love that play. Love well, it. And, and I'll tell you what we were talking about last night, what we were going to have on the show for a throwback video. We had a different one in mind, and I'm like, John. Would it be a good idea if we brought like a Steelers? Listen, we're gonna have three Steelers on the panel today. We might as well start off the show. He's like, you know what? You're right. Which one should we look at? So we're talking about different players and different highlights. And I was like, you know what? I think my favorite defensive play. We always do offensive plays on this show. I think everybody does. Offense is so much more glamorous to most people. But I was like, you know, we need to get one good defensive play. But how about Troy Palomalu's fingertip interception, man? That was one of the that was one of the craziest Maybe. picks right. I've seen in a long time. So that was the first thing that came to mind. Right. Hey, Rob, what do you think about that play, man? Um, um, breathless with that play every time I see it. <laughs> it's just that. Um, yeah, what am I I, like, the only thing, the only thing I can say is, wow, that was yeah. just that was just a good play. Be sure. One of the most amazing plays by one of the most amazing safeties that ever played the game. 
Right. And for me, Bill Brew, I was I between I was stuck between that one and the one handed one against Tennessee, the kind of the Odell cup of kind of thing, but he you know he didn't do it like Odell, but you, but you got my point though. Well against yeah. Tennessee, that was more that yeah, was, well, I he also no did, two plays. He also did yeah. that one in the Ravens when he got that in yeah, the, the for Baltimore, Yeah, yeah, Baltimore yeah that was yeah, see, like, so many that, like that stuck between good, the torn between the two, torn between but the see, two. But, but see, my, my, my problem always is when you see the interceptions, right? It always has to be a pick six, six for a highlight show. They very mm-hmm. rarely show an interception. For example, he falls on his own. They don't usually show that kind of a thing. And I'm like, you know what? That is without the touchdown involved. Obviously, it's an impressive oh. interception no matter what. But like, right, I think right. it was such a special pick on its own. You don't need the touchdown after that play, man. Like, <laughs> any sort of touchdown that wouldn't just be a phenomenal play. That would be like a legendary play that people would be showing every day. But and I ain't like the defenders. Uh, the offensive guy jumping on him after the play was over. We ain't gonna talk right. about that. <laughs> that, was, that, that was that wasn't that, cool. That was like, like, stuff right there. <laughs> All right, Johnson. I want the fastback video of the week. I do it every single week, man. So just tune in next week to find out what our next fastback video of the week is. So I do appreciate y'all chiming on that one. So are we ready for the questions, Bubba Roo? You ready? I, I am so ready, guys. I am all so right, ready. All right. So we got question number one. What is the weakness? What what uh, what are the weaknesses for the Steelers going into this season? Well, there could have been many, but everybody probably thought the quarterbacks was going to be the weakness, and that, to me, is not the case. My, my beliefs and philosophies on this upcoming Steelers season is this O-line is the worst O-line I've seen in recent times. And I hope they get better. I hope they progress through the season. But as of right now, that is the biggest weakness going into this season is our O-line with Devin Bush and his linebacking ability probably right below that. All right, uh, Robbie? Uh, definitely the, the O-line. The secondary also scares me a lot, man. Like if that front seven don't get to the, don't get to the, the passer every game, it's going to be real bad for the secondary. All right, uh, Rich Moat. No, I, I agree. I, I, I think that – I see, I never doubt the quarterback play. Me and John talked behind the scenes for a while when Mitch got signed, and I told him I was excited by Mitch. I, I think that what he brings to the table on this offense, and obviously it's like, – like we talked about on the uh, Triple P experience as well, it's not a knock on Ben, but Ben's been on his downward you know, spiral for the last three seasons. And it was about time we got somebody mobile. Because if you remember when Big Ben was mobile early on, that offense was terrifying because when he was able to scramble and get out of the play and the arm was still healthy, the shoulder yeah. – by the time he retired, what? It was a shoulder. It was an arm. It was a wrist. It was the back. It was the knees. I mean, that guy was a walking – like you know, he, was, he was just a walking injury. You know, that's all he was. And, uh, yeah, I think the quarterback plays going to be what surprises people the most. But, yeah, I think the offensive line is, uh, is still what scares me the most on that, on that team right now. And, again, I, I agree with Robbie, too. The secondary might come in that area somewhere because I think even with the linebacker concern that we have with Bush, I think there's enough – I think there's enough good play out of the other six guys on that lineup to where maybe it can disguise a little bit of his weaknesses a little bit. Whereas off into line, we don't really have an anchor there yet to, to, to hide that. So that's what I would think. All right, be sure. Yeah, I think the secondary is going to be something that you, I mean, you got Fitzpatrick back there, but I mean, really who else do you got? You got to depend on what, what is the, what is your best corner? Isn't he a second year player? Uh, I think Will Lee Wallace is our best corner right now. Uh, no. Oh, yeah. Well, well, yeah, that guy that you got from Buffalo. Yeah, Wallace. Um, he's he's yeah. not even started. He's not started. No, no he's not. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, there you go. <laughs> um, for me, it's 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 the old line like uh Bubba Brew talked about. That's a, that's one of the biggest issues. I don't want to be at a point where Nigel Howard's gonna be fighting for all his yards for the rest of his career in Pittsburgh. I don't want that, man. I really like we didn't realize how good we had offensive lines until they were gone, like Pouncey, uh, uh, Max Start, um, Marcus Gilbert, you know, those guys that we had, man. And I was like, yo, I didn't realize how good our line was until all of them started going one by one. And I'm like, yo, I really took our old line for granted, man. I really did, man. And now seeing that we have what we have now, yeah, a lot of them was rookies last year. One going to their, their second year, third year, or even their first year with this team. So with them together, I expect them to be much better, hopefully. That's another thing. I'm gonna go with the front seven. They have to we have to stop the run. We can't stop the run for nothing. I really was upset last year because Mickey Fitzpatrick was the leading safety and tackles because they had to keep playing the fifth linebacker because the front seven couldn't even block. So when it came to running game, he's coming up every play. So he couldn't be in his position to make his plays. So I think that's why he missed out on the all pro and the Pro Bowl last year. I think for that reason he gets sent to show his 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 primary position because he's being the first fifth linebacker in our secondary and we cannot have that man. So the guy so bringing in Miles Jack is a real big plus. I need Devin Bush to step up much as possible, man. I gave such a down last week for the reason I gave it to him for. And I need I need to be a lot better, man. But it's the O line, the secondary and that front seven for me. 
It most definitely, definitely is. All right, well, then, uh, do you want me to kick off the second question real fast then while yeah, we're here? Might as well move it on. Right. All right, so I'm going to start with Bubba again because you're, 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 the, you're the featured uh, guest here. Well, thank you. Um, so who is your favorite stealer of all time? I know it's a very broad question. If you have to split it between offense and defense, that's fine. But oh. who would you say your favorite stealer? Well, anybody that's that's played in the Steeler uniform in my uh, illustrious 51 years, because I've been a Steeler fan all my life, um, when they play for the Steelers, I, I support them wholeheartedly. Now, when they leave the Steelers, I, not so much. <laughs> Um, there's, there's many Steelers in the seventies when I was growing up during and living in Western Pennsylvania and actually seeing that, I mean, I, I eat and, and breathe the culture, um, in Western Pennsylvania, Steeler football. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to say probably there's a couple, but the, and maybe go in generations. Uh, I was a big Bradshaw guy, uh, a huge Lambert man, huge, huge fan of Lambert. And I always loved the toughness and the eighties of Merrill Hodge. Um, but my all time guy, uh, because he just retired and he's been with the Steelers for 20 years is my man right here. Big, big Ben it will always be something to me. Um, but anybody that's wears the black and gold, there's numerous, uh, guys that we could say because the whole hall of fame's got a whole section over there in Canton. It's all Steeler fight. I hate to say it. I mean, that's just how it is. Um, and there's a lot of great players that came through this organization like Bettis, but I mean, there's so many players, but those are the best ones to me that mean Pittsburgh Steeler football. Okay. And then, John, what about you? Where do you go with that? It's number seven, man. The Harvard Lion, man. You know I love Big Ben, man. The man never gives up, man. Yeah, towards the end of his career, you know, you've seen the decline, man. But before then, the guy was amazing. He was hard to tackle. He won the hardest quarterback to take down. Ask Ray Lewis. Ask um, Terrell Suggs. They had difficulties trying to get the man down because he's a big man. You know what I'm saying? So, He's somebody that I never gave up on playing. Somebody I love, man. Watching, man. Him and Troy Palomaro, I feel like one of the best safeties in the game, along with Ed Reed and Brian Dawkins, Weapon X, as well as, you know, like those are my two guys right there. Okay. And then, uh, Robbie, where, 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 where do you go with your favorite Steeler of all time? Uh, well, don't get me wrong. I, I love Big Ben and I appreciate what he did, but my man is Rod Woodson. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I like my played cornerback, safety in high school. I'm going to go with that. Okay. And then, Brian, who would you say is your favorite Steeler of all Robbie time? I hate Robbie for that, what, that answer because that was my answer. <laughs> <laughs> Rob Great Bush, man. without hey. a doubt, one of my favorites. You know, I, and for me it's tough because, I mean, my dad was a Steelers fan. My brother-in-law was a big time. Listen, when you live in PA, I feel like those are the two teams that everybody gravitates towards. And either that or, you know, you have like the typical Eagles fan where it's like, oh, my favorite team is the Eagles. My backup team is Pittsburgh. That's how it, it seems to be. Uh, it's all about the home state. So for me, though, I mean, it's tough, but I'd probably go Troy Palomalo. I, I just think I, I just think watching that guy play, and again, and he played a very similar style as Brian Dawkins. I mean, it, they both played that nickel rush a lot of the time. A lot of them, they both played line of scrimmage. They both played in the linebacker slot. They both played backfield. You know, I mean, they did a lot of things for the team. I, I think Troy was just fun to watch. I mean, I wasn't a big fan of the head and shoulders commercials, but I did like Troy Palomalo. <laughs> I never had him act like I did. I was like, <laughs> I thought it was a little, I thought it was a little too Baywatchy for a football player. But I mean, you know, one minute he's like turning and flopping his hair, and his eye would sparkle, and I'm like, all right, man, listen, you got to stop, okay? You're you're ruining this for me. But but that's yeah, that's one thing that he was known for was his hair. His hair, man. Long, 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 I know. Long, I know. Long, 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 where's that hair at? He had it insured. You know. He, he had it insured for like five million dollars too. So had somebody <laughs> went snip snip, he was getting paid. So right, I don't so blame him. Uh, question off. I'm gonna get some uh, number three. I mean, go ahead, uh, Rich. Give me question number three. All right. So so I'll start with Robbie this time, so we don't put Bubble on the spot every time first year. So Robbie, what are you excited to see from Pittsburgh this season? Like, what, what are the things that you're looking for the most out of this team? What are your? How do you see it? Uh. Yeah, that's a tough question right there, man. I can't wait to see what Mr. Trubisky can do this year, you know? That's the – that's the like him, I know the offense line is going to be shaky and all, and George Pickens especially. I'm really expecting Chase Claypool to bounce back after last season and uh, interested to see how Levi Walsh would fit into the start system. Okay. And then, Bubba, how about you? Uh, what are you most excited to see from Pittsburgh? I'm excited to see the new leadership of the Steelers organization as Najee Harris – and on the back of Najee, getting the tough yards to hopefully lead us into the playoffs because it's something we haven't seen because he's going to be now the front man of the Steeler organization for now and years to come. And hopefully that run defense can be solidified and from being last place to maybe, look, I don't want to be greedy, 
but maybe in the top, maybe 22, I'll take 20, I'll take 19. Something of that nature to solidify because last year was a total bust for me and it upset me very much so. So that's what I like to see this year. And I, I just want to see us get into playoffs too. So Yep, understood. All right. And then, uh, John, what about you, man? What are you, what are you excited Almost to see? Ever. Uh, George Pickens, man, that wide receiver out of Georgia, man. I'm I really to think, too. I really think he'll really be. I think he's gonna be the X factor. Him and Gunner will be the X factor, but, but outside of Gunner, it's George Pickens. Man. I think somebody nobody really gonna pay attention to. He's gonna come out nowhere and be really explosive, man. If Clay put a step up, step up, I think he's gonna be the one to take his, his spot, man. And I heard they is playing Clay put in the slot and put him at the two. So we'll see how that goes. But I'm really excited for him and also Mitch Trubisky, man. I think some of the uh, people were like like when he came to the team, he was a big thing. You know, it was a big talk in Pittsburgh. Then when we drafted Kenny Pickens, it kind of like went away a little bit. Like we were talking about him no more. But then he competed, he competed. Him and uh, Kenny Pickens did really, really good, great together in the preseason. And um, him being uh, uh, the captain uh, showed that he had great leadership, man. So I'm looking to see what he's going to do. So those are two my two guys. I'm looking uh, forward to seeing. And Brian, what about you? What do you what do you what do you excited to see from Pittsburgh this year in comparison to last year? I'm actually excited to see what the defensive coordinator is going to do. He was a defensive coordinator for the Lions at one point. And now that Tomlin has given him the chance, I think he's going to be a, he's going to be a great defensive coordinator. It's just that, you know, the Lions didn't give him too much of a chance because, you know, they're the Lions. But anyway, have to play yeah, I think they're, I think he'll do a lot better with Pittsburgh. And I think he'll, he'll uh, find creative ways to make that secondary play well because he was a secondary guy, coach anyway. So usually they make pretty good defensive coaches. So I'm, I'm eager to see what he does. Okay. And, then, and then for me, what I really want to see is that offensive play calling, actually, because I want to see how much we open things up uh, with Mitch Trubisky in comparison to, you know, because obviously with Big Ben, a lot of it was drop back and throw the ball. I think with Trubisky, and I, what I love about the Trubisky fit is – with a weak O line, what's one of the best things to do? It screens, it's, 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 it's quick plays. You'll know, get rid of that ball quickly, and yeah. I think a big part of that is going to be maybe some uh, some RPOs, a lot of play action, get the defense you know off foot, and see if maybe we can make some plays outside on the sideline kind of thing. And this way, we're not having to worry about that offensive line holding up for as long as they had to last year. Because with Big Ben not being able to be very mobile, offensive line looked a lot worse. I want to see if maybe they look a little bit better this year, where they they can give Trubisky a little bit of time. But Trubisky can also make plays on the run as well. That's why I'm excited about that because that line does collapse. We got escapability, something we did not have last year, like you just alluded to not so long ago. Yep. So with, with him and um, Kenny Pickers able to do that, man, I'm happy for that because that's the line's not what it needs to be right now. I think still a work in progress. And I was telling people that last year, the difference between the O line and Ben, if they got time, he don't. That was that was it for him last year. You know what I'm saying? So with that, I'm like, yo, now we got escapability now. We can make more plays now because that's what Ben was able to do when the line collapsed. He was able to get out of the pocket and make plays, and that was he made. His bread and butter off, it was extending plays. It worked two times, sometimes but it didn't. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. with Mr. Trubisky doing it, like he can escape. He got great escapability. He's not the fastest quarterback, but he can get out of that pocket and extend plays. And I like the fact that we can get back to that, not having a stationary quarterback anymore. Absolutely. Well, the guys, Mitch, Mitch is going to have to listen to Canada because last year Ben was the offensive coordinator for the last couple of years. So now this is going to be Matt Canada's offense to be run because Mitch is not going to be. Uh, like Ben, you know what I mean? He's going to have to listen. So this is going to be a whole totally new offense that Ben is not running. Mitch will have to lead it. And hopefully, like I said before on my podcast, if Mitch runs the whole season, this will be the comeback player of the year if he gets to play the whole year. I think that's definitely a possibility. But I, so with that being said, uh, Bubba, what is your favorite Steelers moment? Was there ever oh a moment that just, like, there's captivated so, you? There's so many. Uh, I mean, like I said before, growing up in western Pennsylvania, an hour north of Pittsburgh in Indiana, PA, this is, that's where I'm from. Uh, my grandfather got me into it because he was a season ticket holder for the Steelers. I got his ticket. I was a season ticket holder for 17 years to see all the glorious that's stuff in, in Three Rivers, Heinz Field. Um, I mean, I went to Ben's last game. It was very historic, very emotional for me. Um, but also uh, just – just seeing like I didn't get to capture uh the the Super Bowl years because I was younger you know what I mean so when they you know when they played Seattle that was awesome it, they took that drought but seeing that Cardinal Super Bowl and seeing Big Ben take those guys down with that time and throw to San Antonio Holmes is probably besides the Immaculate Reception which I was only a year old um that was probably to me one of the greatest plays to actually hoist the championship, and I got to see it 
you know, not at a, a young, you know, and when I was a little kid, I got to see to it, and, it and yeah. Re- yeah, and relish in it and go out yeah. and get the newspapers and magazines and save the memorabilia because you never know when the opportunities were coming. And it's been a while, but that's probably my greatest one of my, and there's a lot. I mean, it's so many. Yeah. We could talk yeah. about it for hours yeah. and hours, but yeah. that's probably my greatest one that I, that I can think of on the top of my head. Okay, yeah, definitely. All right, so, John, what about yours? What's your favorite Steelers? I got so many. I'm going to go with Bubba Brew, man. In that corner, man, you have four defenders and Ben Putty. Only way the the wide receiver can catch it. It's still amazing to me. It's still, like, one of my greatest Super Bowl moments of our our, uh, history. Um, And also with the James Harrison return picks, I can go there, too. That was a great one, too. He dropped back. Uh, Kurt wanted to see him. I don't know how he didn't see that big ass guy, but you know, he seen him. He took it away home. But that 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 play in the corner, man, it was, in the toe drag swag that he had in that moment, it was just crazy. Like he got four defenders, man, and, and he was just in that corner and, and he had been placed it right there on the money, like. And so that's one of my favorite. That is probably my favorite. Man, that's right, Rob- though, but that's one of my favorites. All right, Robbie, what about you? What's your favorite Pittsburgh Steelers moment? Uh, it's definitely Super Bowl Forty Three, the James James Harrison interception. That, that yeah. definitely, definitely that right there. All right. That's crazy too. Brian, what do you think the best Pittsburgh Steelers moment is, in your opinion? I think the best. Well, in my opinion, the best Pittsburgh Steelers moment I was when they won the Super Bowl against Seattle, and Jerome Bettis got to celebrate in front of his friends and his family. Yeah. Jerome Bettis was has been a state mark in the state of Michigan, even though he went to Notre Dame. Uh, never gonna forgive him for that bullshit. But anyway, <laughs> he, he he was you know he used to be well known in in uh Detroit area because he you know he played for for the high school uh, I think it was uh country day he paid for and you know a lot of people a lot of athletes come out of country day and uh he was just you know he, he gave back to the community even though he was in Pittsburgh he gave back to the community he's a great guy I met him once he's a big fella but uh yeah he's 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 pretty cool people and that's why I felt good for him for winning the Super Bowl you, you know, it's funny. Is I was going to say something very similar. I, I think seeing Heinz Ward and Jerome Bettis after that game was, was you know, guys like James Farrier and all them guys that weren't able to make that second Super Bowl. Uh, I think it was a really cool moment because a lot of them guys stayed loyal to that team for a very, very long time. And obviously most of them only got one championship because a lot of them didn't play by the time, you know, the, the Cardinal Super Bowl came along. I think that was a really special Super Bowl as well was definitely the one in Seattle. I think that was like the, hey, we're back kind of moment for Pittsburgh. I think that's yeah, really what definitely. that was. Uh, and I think a lot of people knocked Pittsburgh for that at first because it was Seattle and they weren't really supposed to go that far. And really, it was a team that was mostly a run team with, with uh, Sean Alexander at the time. Other than that, they didn't really have much else. But still, the Super Bowl is the Super Bowl, right? I mean, if they weren't it supposed is. to be there, well, then somebody else should have knocked them out before they got up against Pittsburgh. That's just how football works. And, uh, you know, so I, I always gave them a lot of credit for that Super Bowl. That was kind of like when Pittsburgh said, you know what? I think that was like your, what, your first Super Bowl since like the 80s or the 70s. Whatever. That was, was 20, the 26 year drought. Yeah. And, and that that's why wild, that was, yeah, that was so card. special. That was so special. Guys like Jerome yeah. Bettis that were, you know, they were doubted. He played for the Rams for a while. They kind of tossed him up for very little at the time. Um, and it was just cool to see them kind of guys be able to celebrate. And especially right before they retired. I mean, Jerome Bettis was an old man. Everybody and knew also Cower and Cower. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah. I know a lot of people don't like Bill Cower, but I mean, they I do. I love, love Bill. Bill. I love Bill. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, then this brings us to our last question here before we move on to some other stuff here. Um, so the last question I have, and I'll start off with Bubba here. Uh, what will be this Pittsburgh Steelers record this season? Well, I know we did a mega cast uh, last week where we did we went through every game uh, on the show with the couple podcasts, and I know uh, Big Dog was on there, and I went twelve and five. Surprisingly, I went twelve uh. and five with Pittsburgh, um, and it's very hard to uh, do shows like that where you got to pick and you got to be real. But I'm a yinzer, and it's very hard for me, but. 12 and five this year into the playoffs. And hopefully we can go further than that. What would you say? Is, what would you say is the absolute bottom as far as the basement? Like, What would you say is like worst case scenario for Pittsburgh? I mean, if you were to not go 12 and five, if you had to sit here and say uh, 12 and five is you know, obviously the ceiling. That's what we're aiming for. That's what our expectation is. But what, 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 what would you see the low end at? I'd say nine and eight. I mean, there's yeah. still Tomlin's still going to give them the 500 nine and eight, but uh, you know, the ball could bounce here and there. And those are the, that, that's what we have to do because we're not going to be a high scoring offense and Chris Boswell's field goals are going to be some tight games and they're going to give us the victories that we need. Absolutely. Okay. And then, uh, and then Brian, what do you think Pittsburgh is going to do this season? I think that they, uh, I just think that with Baltimore coming back from all their injuries, Cincinnati getting better in their offensive line. Um, 
I think Pittsburgh is way better than, than Cleveland. I think they they might take a game or two away from Baltimore like they normally do. Um, but I still think they're going to finish third in that division. But they're going to do it with a winning record. They're going to be like nine and eight because it's Tom. Tom ain't going gonna, ain't gonna to have a, a losing season. I'm sorry. It just ain't going to happen. So they're going to have to drag his carcass out of there, you know, somehow, some way, if they're going to ever get rid of Tomlin, because he's not going to have a losing season. So I have faith in Tomlin, but I just don't see Pittsburgh. I mean, that whole AFC is just built too good. Yeah. And it's your, your extra team that's going to be a wild card team is either going to come from the AFC North or the AFC West. And I do believe that. So we, whoever, is in third place for the AFC West and the AFC North and has a better record in the AFC is going to be the one that's going to do the wild card. I'm not saying Pittsburgh won't do it. I think they can. Um, but I don't think they're a better team than Baltimore and Cincinnati at this point because of their defensive issues in the backfield and their offensive line. If we can get the, you know, get the offensive line to gel and defense to play better uh, in the back end, then, you know, I'll, I'll give them some playoff credit for that. Yeah, and, and I, I said the same thing. We were on the Triple B experience, uh, what was that, about a month ago now. Uh, and I said the same thing. I see them being, and it's not an insult. I think that division is so goddamn good. It always is. I mean, that division yeah. has always been very, very competitive. And I, I think, and, and I agree. I mean, like, let's say, for example, Cincinnati was decent last year. I mean, this is a Super Bowl. You know, they, they were in the Super Bowl last year, right? So we, can't, we, definitely, can't, we definitely can't put them down. Um, I think they're still going to be a really good team. I think they might even be better than they were last year. Now they're starting to find a way to play around again. Joe Burrow with no time was great. Joe Burrow with more time is really scary as far as, you know, looking forward. Obviously, that might not work out. But how it looks on paper right now, right? We're not there yet. Um, and, again, I think Baltimore, I mean, what were they? Like, I think they were seven games over 500 or six games over 500 before Lamar went out and the whole team kind of fell apart after that. The injuries just absolutely derailed them. I, I think with that running back, class that they have with J.K. Dobbins. They go out and pick up Mike Davis, who's actually a very underestimated signing, in my opinion. Um, they had some good guys there in the backfield. Lamar is still Lamar. I mean, I'm not a big fan of the running quarterback first idea, but it works for him, and it works in that system, so so be it. And defensively, they're healthy and got some really good young up and coming talent. Um, so I, I definitely think that Pittsburgh's ceiling for me would be that second spot if Baltimore were to slip up a little bit. I still have Cincinnati winning that division no matter what, but I would say about 9-8. and eight. And I could see, again, with the ball bouncing a couple different ways, I could possibly see like an 11 and six season, something like that, as far as the ceiling for me. Um, John, what, what do you got on that? What's your take on, on that on that record? Uh, the homer in me is 12 and five. I actually did the, uh, I was actually on the Triple B experience. Um, Don't be the homer. With, uh, Bubba Brew, whenever they were doing their uh, picks, so I did have my 12 and five for the homer in me. But realistically, nine and eight in a postseason, uh, a wild card spot, it, it could be something else. We could possibly sweep, sneak, uh, win 10. We could, but nine and eight. Is is legit. Uh, I, Robbie, what do you have? You're, I think I don't think anybody's ever heard your opinion so far. So, what do you got? Um, well, a while ago when we did a podcast and we did the records, I had him at ten and seven. Okay. And uh, and nine and eight at the worst possibility. Uh, finishing well, worst possibility, third place. That's where I have it. To be okay. All right. Well, yeah, that, that pretty much sums up our Pittsburgh talk there. Um, All right. Again, so I'll get into the next yeah, one. All yeah. right. So we're going to go ahead and talk about the Rams and Bills game this past Thursday, which was a very, very interesting game. So we're going to get right into that. The some things the I do, definitely do want to talk about. <laughs> I know we got somebody in the comment section. I love that we happy to be talking about this. Um, This game ended 31 to 10 inside um the Rams house. Um. We're going to talk about the uh, rights and wrongs in this game. So I'm going to start with um, Ben Schroeder. What was the right in this game, the rights in this game, and then the wrong in this game? What was the right and the wrongs? Well, the right yes. was Josh Allen. Uh, <laughs> yep. <laughs> that dude just played really well. And for all the naysayers out there talking about, like, he threw two interceptions. No, one was his was his fault. Uh, was his he got fault. the actually that, that guy got the ball taken away from him. Um, but that was on target. And the second one, I think he was just being too um, – he was being too confident with that interception because he threw that right into coverage. And that's like, okay, Josh, calm the fuck down. You know what I'm saying, dog? You're playing real good. Leave it alone. Don't be trying to make too many plays that you shouldn't be making. Um, the best play I, – I felt the best play of that game was that stiff arm he gave uh, Scott 
mm-hmm. out there that that that's uh safety. Oh man, he's stiff darn. He he made he made Derrick Henry look proud on that one. <laughs> he stiff darned the crap out of him. And he, he just played really well. And uh the, the defense, oh my god, that defense, seven sacks in the first game. Woo! And Von Miller, he ain't slowed down yet. You know, he's he's still that guy. I think he was ex- extra pumped because he was playing the Rams. So we'll see he how he does. He was post game. He was tearing up post game. Yeah, he yeah. yeah he, he was he was that you know, he got his ring. Got he showed ring. a lot of class though. He showed a lot of class the way yeah. he talked about the Rams. He didn't bash mm-hmm. them at all. He said I love them guys. I mean, I thought that was really cool. He went out and played really well and he still paid homage to the guys that he played with the year before, which it's nice to see that cuz we see so many celebrity athletes now yeah. where they like to trash <laughs> somebody the moment they leave. <laughs> right. All right, we're just you ready. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. And, and then the wrongs of the game. <laughs> Jalen oh, Ramsey. Oh god. Let's save Number that. Let's wrong. save that. Let's save that. <laughs> then we had the offensive line. Oh, that just shredded was shredded. The running game was nothing. Acres, I don't know. He, did he, they don't have he even showed up. <laughs> they, 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 I believe they had a hangover. They, they yeah. were they had a hangover. They were drinking in Buff. They were drinking in you know in, in SoFi yeah, the night terribly. before. Man, I don't know what happened. I, I think the, the play calling was shoddy. Um, what I told Kevin, who's our 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 uh, Buffalo Bill fan, I said, you know, if you get to Stafford, you're going to fluster him. I know this for a fact because I'm a Stafford guy. I know how he is. If you do not protect him, he's going to start having dancing feet. And he's going to get a little nervous back there. And that show overthrowing some passes, a bad, a bad interception, a couple of bad interceptions he threw. It's you know, and then it, it Stafford is just a funny kind of quarterback anyway. He can either be all good in one part of the game and all bad in the next part of the game. You know what I'm saying? So it's like that little pretty ass pass he threw the um, cup in the back of the end zone. Not many quarterbacks can make that pass. But then he throws a fucking interception. That's like wow, dude, <laughs> you didn't see that guy. But you know. That it's just the all all the accumulation for bad was on the LA side. All the accumulation for good was on the Buffalo side. I agree. <laughs> all right, Rich Smoke, yeah, you know yeah. the wrongs of this game. Yeah, so I mean the rights are pretty obvious, right? I mean, Josh Allen's still Josh Allen. He definitely didn't lose a step. Uh definitely looks even better. He looks hungrier for me, in my opinion. I think that I think that last game he played against Kansas City, that really amped him up. I think that lit a whole new fire. So whatever you saw last year, I think he's gonna come even harder this year. Um I got to say that defense looked impeccable. I mean, that defense was absolutely incredible for Buffalo. And see, I, I, and, and the only thing I'll disagree with Brian a little bit is I don't think it was the play calling by the Rams. I think it was the fact that Buffalo put so much pressure early that the Rams had to get away from their game plan by the time the second quarter was even really kind of going. Because even though Buffalo wasn't scoring points, I mean, aside from that one fluke interception from McKenzie, you know, when he lets the ball go up and it gets picked off, I mean, that would have been another seven right there. That would have been like 14-0 game. I mean, they, they, the, the Bills had a chance to put this game away in the first quarter, it felt like. Um, so, so for me, I think a big problem was the Rams gave up too much too early. You know, I think the turnovers were a huge problem. Uh, again, I, I think Kevin just posted the exact same thing I was going to say. Akers had three carries for zero yards. I think Henderson had like 10 or I, I, How many rushing yards did they even have in that game? Less than 30? I mean, it was bad. It felt like they had none. Because, um, mm-hmm. again, they were forced to throw the ball so early. And then I got to say, and I get that Mahomes does it and guys like Stafford and these celebrity guys do it. I hate that no-look bullshit, man. I understand that it's supposed to look cute and it makes highlight films. But you saw and, – and listen, it was 31-10. to 10. I'm not saying that the game was going to turn around. They were going to come back and win. But you definitely want to get out of the score, right? I mean, you want to come down there and you want to like you want to you want to show some effort. I mean, without that interception, they go down the score, make it look a little bit, you know maybe a little bit more respectable at least. I don't know, just something. But and I feel like the only guy he looked at all game was goddamn Cooper Cup. <laughs> and I told John before the season started, the Allen Robinson signing doesn't excite me too much because how much are they going to utilize him in that offense when they already have guys like Cup and you know they do a lot of quick stuff at the line of scrimmage. They love Higby and all that, but. For me, and I agree with Brian on one thing, and that's the Bills were all the pros and the Rams were all the cons. I think aside from Cooper Cup, I don't think the Rams had a lot of positives. All right, so for me, the rights obviously, the obviously with Josh Allen, maybe was amazing. I think it was, I think both sides, both QBs, kind of shaky in the beginning with the turnovers. Man, some of it wasn't their fault. Some were, you know, what I'm saying. So it was kind of shaky with the turnover thing, but the defense was phenomenal for the Bills, man. Uh, question Von Miller in that haircut, but he did play exceptional. <laughs> Outside of that. So I really was excited to see what he was able to do. He was just dominant, man. I think Notebook tried to hold his own first play, then came back with a bull rush, Von Miller with the bull rush, right into um, Stafford and Saxon. 
and then he goes up under him. They sack yeah. again a little bit later in the game. Uh, that was really, really good. Um, so I think that was crazy there. Um, all of that, I didn't like the wrongs. I, I didn't like with the Josh Allen design runs. I think it was too much running he was doing. I really wasn't excited about the running thing um, that jo- Josh Allen was doing. Um, said when he needed to. The majority of it looked like some, it was more d- design plays needed to, in my opinion. Uh, another wrong was uh, James Cook fumbling the ball in his first carry uh, as, and, as an NFL player. That's not really good. It's not the sign you want for your rookie guy. You just uh, drafted. And he got sat for draft. a while after that, too. He, he didn't sat for a while, for a while right. after that. Yeah. So that was really bad. And then Jalen Ramsey, I will get in the, I'll get in the stats of that once we all done taking our takes on that. But he, oh, man, I don't think he was ready. I feel like the Rams was still had that Super Bowl hangover. I feel he, like the pressure, I feel like the pressure was on the Bills because there they was in hostile uh, territory. But can I really say it was hostile territory? Because Bills Mafia was everywhere in that stadium. I don't know if I've seen too many Rams play, uh, fans in that stadium. I seen Bills Mafia everywhere. So it was like, yo, like it, it felt like it was their home game, man. I seen a lot more Bills fans cheering yeah. than one for the Rams. And the so, one that I meant to say that's, too. That's irrelevant. I think that's irrelevant because every game that they played last year, they had other people's fans in there. LA I'm is, not that, kind of, I'm LA is not that kind of a football city. But I, I, okay? I, I, I did mean to say too, though Ramsey made Eli Apple look like Charles Woodson. That's all I know. He made <laughs> Eli Apple look incredible the way he played the yeah. other day. And, yeah, you know, so, I, I, and I, I better see that man stay humble for at least a few weeks. That man better not come out calling himself the best in the league for at least a couple of weeks after that. Right, burn, man. because um the Rams like they wasn't the Rams look like they was not prepared at all. In, in my opinion, it doesn't look like the app. After all, they were unprepared, man, and the Bills was on fire. They knew what they had to do. They knew that was playing against Super Bowl uh, defending champs, so they knew they had to make a statement, and they definitely did. Justin Gabriel was another guy that went crazy as well. I think it will be a real big uh, target for Josh Allen this season, upcoming season, so those are my rights and wrongs. All right, uh, Rob, what's your, Robbie, what's your rights and wrongs in this game? Uh, rights and wrongs is that the Rams' defense looked shook and lost the whole entire game. Uh and when you're playing against a, a, a great offense like how Buffalo go, that high octane offense, you want to keep Josh Allen on the bench and run that ball. They didn't do that at all. They only had uh, 50, 52 yards rushing the whole the whole game. When and um, looked like the defense was playing back and was so scared the Preston wide receivers. Jalen Ramsey, uh, we'll save that for another conversation. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I guess back for that in a minute. Uh, uh, but we'll, we'll, but we'll when you. But when you play against Josh Allen, he's a top five quarterback. You have to keep him on the bench as long as you can. Run that ball. You should have ran that ball. And you can't turn the ball over against Buffalo, especially having a great offense like that. They're going to capitalize. And real fast, I do want to give Jalen Ramsey a little bit of credit. There was two plays where he got absolutely burnt, and you could tell there was supposed to be safety help over the top, and there was nobody there. I will give him <laughs> that. Like that one, Stephon Diggs to the corner. Like you see Ramsey like back letting him go because, I mean, again, usually in that kind of a coverage, it looked like it was like a cover four almost. Let uh, me tell you about that. Let me tell you Usually you have somebody that. waiting. Let you me let tell go. you about those plays. First of all, that's what a cornerback does. When they're a seasoned cornerback and they know they're the one that's supposed to be handling that play, they always look back like they're supposed to be safety help. Motherfucker, no, that's you. That is that your was, job. That, that looks like a cover and four. Just to me. Like, that out, trying to think like everybody's supposed to be a safety back there. No, dog. That's your if you're playing man coverage on one side, that's what you do. You don't expect, man. You, you can't have safety over the top. That was his job. He you're a number one corner. You're playing man coverage. I don't care. He just got beat. He got beat. Yeah, he did get beat. He got beat. No, he did. No, he did. I'm just saying. Like, I'm saying though, with a guy like with a guy like Stephon Diggs out there and Gabe Davis, you gotta have somebody over there though. I mean, I'm not saying it's not. I'm not saying that Ramsey's fully innocent, but they have to give some kind of fucking help. Like, they they ain't gonna give dragged. safety help to a no. Wait, hey. wait a minute. Wait a minute. Jalen Ramsey is considered one of the best corners in the league. Well, I've always been against game. that. Sure, hold us on. I've always been against that. I've always been against that. You can't. So he won't need safety help over the top. That's what when you be in when you're number one, number two, number three, say uh, corner in the league. You don't have to have safety over the top. That's your guy. You say I should be able to hold your own. Jalen Ramsey did not do his job. Period. All right, uh, Bubba Brew. What's your rights and wrongs of Thursday night's game? Well, the the wrong for me is Buffalo looked too good. <laughs> That's <laughs> that would be the wrong like. Allen looked like he's ready to take this MVP trophy home already. Um, right. And that's very, they're very, very scary right now. Um, hopefully it doesn't last long uh, because I, I don't want to, because we see him in a, probably a month and a half. Um, they're very, the receivers are good. Like everything was going good for Buffalo Thursday night. And, and 
it, they just looked so so damn good and i don't like that so to me that's the bad part i mean the good part if you're a bills fan you're loving this um because that division is not as strong as it used to be and they look they look badass like josh allen looked badass it looked like he had to control the offense going down in uh not even a hostile territory and it won't be hostile um uh, and the rams just had that hangover when you got the rock cut the promo out there in the end zone you know everybody's looking for the spectacular hollywood stuff and they're not ready to play football and the rams weren't ready to play football and they, they got did. smashed in the mouth by the bills yeah, and it, in the afc right now i mean this is going to be the first week but if they keep playing like that now a month from now we'll see where they're going to be but right now they look very very damn good all right, Sean. So during this game, Jalen Ramsey allowed a perfect passer rating of 158.3 in week one, and he was targeted seven times. He allowed six reception for 124 yards and two touchdown passes. And this was the number one ranked uh, corner last year go, coming into this year. So he got he already said to himself that he they got beat up. They got ass beat, man. He got no excuses. He's about to play better and, and I'll come back from that, is what he said. Uh, when he tweeted a couple of hours ago. Him to be he talked the, about for him it. to come back from the in the next game. He better not allow the person that he covers any catches. He better get a pick. This is the only way that's going to save him. He's got to come back strong. He's got to come back and play like he is a number one corner. Because if he does, he lets he lets one of them damn rookies go off on him. Atlanta, woo! He's gonna need to sit. He's gonna be on sit your ass down <laughs> next week. The real so real so, but he looked like Burton Turns all day. He really that's the like only pro. That's the only pro for the Rams is they have a good follow up game against Atlanta. I mean, if they lose yeah. that game. Just turn the TV off because it's just yep. not why. You know. And be sure that we got that uh, burnt toast. We got that burnt toast picture. We got that. <laughs> we're saving that, ain't we? Yeah, we're saving that. We're saving that. Oh, we're saving that. We're saving that. We're saving that. I thought I have both of them. Don't John's giving all the stats out and everything. God uh, damn it, John. Yeah, burnt toast, right, before, not stat. Before John right. destroys the whole thing here that we have planned, <laughs> which top? All right, yeah, all right. everybody here. John, I'll start with you since you want to talk. I don't want you to talk about that because you're going to ruin it. Uh, <laughs> Which nah, top five me. coach should be on the hot seat this season and why? So, hmm. so I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. I got, I got five of them, but we're going to do five, you of got course. five, but god damn. I, I do, I do. I'm talking about uh, Mike McCarthy, Dallas Cowboys. Um, It's not really all his fault because they are the Cowboys, who they are. But at the same time, man, he is a winning, uh, a former winning uh, Super Bowl head coach. And uh, it's not looking so good right now with Dallas, especially with the current situation they're dealing with right now, man. And it hasn't been – that. They have been able to, but have been able to win since then. So I think um like he's on thin ice with them. Like he gotta be able to uh, prove that he can win um a playoff game or even go farther in the postseason with this team. And if he cannot do it, it's what his third fourth year with Dallas Cowboys now. Yep. If not, man, I think he it, he, he probably gonna be on uh, the hot seat. Right uh, that's next to the my clapper, number one. Mr. Garrett. No, that's <laughs> number one. Number two is Matt Rule. Um I never was excited with him, excited for him to the day he came to Carolina, man. And the Carolina has not been the postseason for some time now. It's been a while since Carolina has been the postseason, man. And they have to get back in it, man. I think they got some uh, available pieces to help them make that run and the post to get to the postseason. As far as winning, we're not really sure, so sure about. But the Carolina Panthers have not been the postseason in a while, man. And he is the head coach. He is the guy uh, that's leading this team. So if he can coach the team up to get become a playoff team, man, to compete with the guy like the Bucks. Um, Move forward, man. I don't know if he'll be there very, very, very long. Uh, number three, I'm gonna go with uh, Cliff Kingsbury. Um, you was one of the best teams in the NFL last year. Um, and the year before that, and, and every single year you went to post, you failed or you didn't make it at all. I think mean, he's another guy I think that uh, needs to uh, get right. Right now, he's he had a current record of 24, 24, and one as uh, is his record with the um Cardinals, man. And uh, after having a 7 0 start and then going down the way they did, man. Uh, this team is, is capable of making a deep run in postseason, and they have been able to do it since. So I think they need to get together before he want to be out of there too. Uh, number four, I'm going to give it to Ron Rivera and uh, Washington Commanders. Uh, he's on uh, 14 and 14, 19 uh, through, uh, his first two seasons with the uh, Washington uh, Commanders, and um, that um, they're not doing very good at all right now. They got some uh, good pieces on their team, but I don't know if it's enough. Uh, Chase Young not being there for the first four games really, really going to hurt them as well. And um, they have been a postseason team in a while since, I think, the way they played the Bucks before the Bucks won the championship game. And I was granted because of the record that it had um, to excuse themselves in that. So, um, yeah, uh, that, that's another guy. I feel like it's going to probably be up out of there if they don't make some changes. Last but not least. 
Kevin Stefanski. You went from one of the worst teams, then you want to, the following year you want to be in one of the best teams, but when the coach of the year, then yet the following year have another losing season. It, it, it just and then now you're not having Deshaun Watson for the first eleven games. Um, things just looking real, real tight for for the Cleveland Browns, man. And they got and they've been gifted with so much talent. It's still having able to uh, show why they could be one of the best teams in NFL on paper. They look at every single year on paper, and every single time the, the course plays, the plays it plays course, they fall down. And um, and it looks so good for him as well, man. So I think if they have, uh, they don't make the postseason this year. I think he's good enough up out of there as well too. So those are my top five guys going to make the hot seat this year. All right, I thought I was asking for one. I guess I read that wrong. All right, um. Bubba, which top five coach should be on the hot seat this season and why? I, I'm going to say uh, I'm going to steal something from Big Dog. I'm going to go with McCarthy because if the Cowboys choke like they did in the playoffs, I believe Jones will get rid of him because he can't handle that. Um, and that's – I'm just going to go at one because any coach – and I, I could throw other coaches in there, but you never know because the season's already started. But if they, they don't get to the playoffs or if they lose – in the playoffs like they did last year, I don't see him being around. Uh, Robbie, what about you? Uh, definitely Kevin Stefanski. You gave up on the the one player who won a playoff game for your team since 1989 in Baker Mayfield. And then you replace him with Deshaun Watson, who gets suspended for, what, the how many games you spent for again? Like seven? So, who? Uh, Watson's 11 games. Yeah. 11 games. 11 games. Yeah, you, you gave up on Mayfield. Uh, a player who won your team their first playoff game since 1989 for a player that got suspended for the first 11 games of the year. Just to start Jacoby Brissett. <laughs> yeah, 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 just to start Jacoby Brissett. <laughs> just to have Brissett. And, and I'm going and, out and, and signing yeah. Josh Rosen because you're desperate. Yeah. And now, and now, and now <laughs> Browns fans think Joshua Dobbs is a good quarterback. Yeah, he, I, I think he might even start at some point. I, I think by week four, you might see Dobbs in there taking over. I think Brissett's going to choke. Um, but I. B. Strilla, one coach, who are you getting rid of? Definitely Clemensbury. This dude, last two years, had the best record, and they made their best fold like a lawn chair in the second half of the season. <laughs> now they just paid Kyler Murray. So the, 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 the problem with this whole situation is who the blame falls, falls on for how they played in the last two seasons when they started off so great. They crashed in both playoff games. They did they even make the playoffs the year. Yeah, they made the playoffs the year before yeah, they crashed. They and then they got blown out by, by the L.A. Rams. Um, and then you, you want to say, well, who should that fall on? Should that fall on a quarterback or should that fall on a coach? Well, we know Kyler Murray is kind of a sensitive cat sometimes uh, when he plays. But let's put it this way. They just pay Kyler Murray. So if they pay Kyler Murray, that means the next person's blame is going to fall on is the coach. Yep. You don't get it done this year, bro. Bye bye. <laughs> right. <laughs> pretty much, pretty much, man. I, I mean, honestly, I, I think that everybody's on the hot seat except for a select few, right? So let's be honest. Like Belichick's never going anywhere in New England until he retires. They're not ever going to fire him. Um, Andy Reid, I think, is safe for the rest of his career in Kansas City. If he wants to be there until he's 90, they're going to let Andy Reid stay until he's 90. Yep. <laughs> I, I think they'll carry him out. They'll wheelchair him. They don't, they don't give a damn. They'll do whatever they got to do. Uh, right. Like Tomlin, Harbaugh, Carroll. I mean, Carroll, maybe not as much, but Harbaugh is probably safe in Baltimore for quite a bit. He's earned a lot of respect there. I mean, but aside from that, I mean, there's not many other guys that I'm looking at on this list. Like McVay may be safe for a while. Uh, even if he has a bad year, they might give him a couple bad years. But really, aside from those couple guys, maybe McDermott might be safe now with the way they're playing. But, like, really, aside from, like, six or seven guys, like guys like Josh McDaniels and Doug Peterson and Jackson, like, all these guys is, eh, we'll see what happens, right? But as far as top coaches in the NFL that I think might go out, I do agree that Clinsbury could be one of them. And I do want to say McCarthy, but I can't because you know what it is? Jerry Jones never knows when to call shit quits. That's yeah, the problem right. with Jerry Jones. Right. Listen, yeah, as an Eagles right. fan, as an Eagles fan, I he love his decision making. I love his decision making. The fact that he kept Jason Garrett as long as he did made me one of the happiest fans in football. Jason Garrett should have got fired by season two, and he was so fucking terrible. Mm -hmm. He underachieved with some of the best rosters Dallas has ever had since the mm -hmm. 90s, and they weren't even winning playoff games. So for me, I think McCarthy's going to hang around like one of those just like those guys that just sticks around forever for no reason. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I guess if I'm going that route, I guess I would go uh, Kingsbury. 
I, I think that he's the only guy that's kind of replaceable as far as top coaches in the league go. Tom Wins, if we're thinking like top 10 coaches in the league, I think you probably put Kingsbury somewhere around nine, somewhere around 10, whatever it may be. Um, this guy's like Tomlin and them guys are safe forever. I don't see them going anywhere. The only way Tomlin gets fired is if he, if he bombs like six seasons in a row, and I don't see that happening. Um, <laughs> So Kingsbury is really the only guy that's left on that list as far as guys that have a lot of talent around him. Uh, Stefanski, I don't call him the top five coach. I know he got coach of the year one year, but I think that was more of the Cinderella story that got him that. I don't think it was the fact that Cleveland was so great that he got it because he wasn't even the best coach in football that year. I think I think Andy Reid was better than him that year. Um, a lot of coaches were better than him that season. This is, he got it because it was the Cleveland Browns. First time making the playoffs since fucking forever. Right. Sorry, wa- sorry pardon my language. Um and, I mean, they kind of just gave it to him as a story. It's like, oh, my God, a Browns coach actually won football games. He automatically gets the trophy. <laughs> Surprised <laughs> they didn't give Mayfield the MVP while they were at it. It was so damn impressive. Um, right. But, yeah, I would say I would say that it definitely has to be Kingsbury. You have the most talent out of any of them guys. Um, Cleveland's – I don't think Stefanski gets fired because he also doesn't have his starting co- quarterback for 11 weeks. So, if they do have a losing season, I think they're going to give him at least one or two more years because, I mean, listen, the guy doesn't have Deshaun Watson or Mayfield. He's going to be stuck with Brissett and Dobbs. Uh, over the course of 11, 11 weeks. So, well, I don't, I don't think he's a good coach because when I was there Monday night, they quit running the ball against the Steelers. If yeah. they would have been running yeah. the ball against the Steelers, the the Big Ben uh, historic last game wouldn't have been that historic. And uh, because our run defense was not good last year, and I was cool sweeping him. I'm cool sweeping. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I am too. But you know what I mean? When he's coaching, he should be knowing all that stuff. You know, maybe he was just living on his laurels. And uh, I mean, anything from Cleveland sucks anyway. So I mean, that's just the way right. it goes. Except for the <laughs> all right, Hall of Fame and the NFL Hall of Fame. So we're gonna get into our, one of our favorite games uh, that we like to do is start a sit cut. We're gonna do the wide receiver version. We're famous we have, for that. Uh, <laughs> we'll start uh, one bench, one cut, one. We got Tony Brown. We got Megatron. We got Julio Jones. I'm start with Bubba Brew. Who you gonna start? Who you gonna bench? Who you gonna cut? Uh, you know, just let's go back and when he was that good and he wasn't crazy. Um. I'm starting A B. Wow. Yeah, as right. crazy as I sound. Um who you sit? Yeah. Um I'm right. gonna sit. Who, who's my options? The other Calvin. two are Calvin Johnson and Julio Jones. Well, I'll bench I'll bench Calvin Johnson because when A B F's up, I'm putting Calvin in and I'm cutting Julio Jones. <laughs> as crazy as it sounds. All right, Robbie. <laughs> Oh my god, this is tough right here. Yeah, does this own their primes? Yep, all prime. All prime. Well, so uh, yeah, obviously we're not doing it now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Calvin's even competitive right now. Come on, man, leave that man alone. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna start Megatron and, and bench AB and uh, cut Julio. Like uh, to me, I love AB and all, but I love tall receivers. Like I love the receivers that go up and get the ball. So I gotta go with Megatron. I gotta start Megatron, bench A B and cut Julio. Uh I'll go next. Uh crazy sound. I'm gonna go start A B. I'm going to. The homer me is, is, is not allowing me to <laughs> move forward. And you said your problem is prom. The problem he was the best receiver for years. And his problem. That is a proven fact. Uh, but, um uh I'm but I'm gonna uh, bench uh Calvin Johnson because when A B does mess up like we what I'm doing, I'll put Calvin Johnson in to the short lead. I'm gonna uh, cut Julio Jones. Rich Smoke. Man, I, it smells like Homer in this moment. Right. <laughs> Duh, I said Homer. I said, Homer. Sorry. <laughs> Woo. I said that. Anyway, anyway, let me let me let me say something real quick. I'm gonna start Calvin. I don't think it's even close. I do like AB. I know he had one of the best stretches for a long time. Don't get me wrong. But let me just point something out. I just want to make this very, very clear. When A B was in Pittsburgh, right? There's a lot of weapons, right? There, so a lot of teams had a guess because there were so many weapons while AB was in Pittsburgh for years. What I love about Calvin, he's big, he's fast, he's strong, yes, very he rarely drop balls, very, very rarely drop balls. And not to mention, he was the only goddamn weapon on the entire Detroit offense. That was it. It was it was literally just Stafford and CJ. That was it. And that man still balled. They triple teamed him. They double teamed. I'll tell you right now, one of the most impressive games, you know, first of all, it's that 270-plus yard game. The other crazy one, and I watched it live, was that snow game. I'm sure Brian remembers the Eagles and, uh, and, and Lions snow game back then. And that man was diving for balls. There was still snow stuck in his face mask. He's still out there balling. I mean, Calvin Johnson is one of the most unfair specimens in NFL history. H- had he kept playing, I think he was, what, 30 when he retired? Had he played another four or five years like most of these guys do, his numbers would be even more impressive, and people would talk about it him. Was, as a, 
He's a, he's a Hall of Famer. Think about this one. He's a Hall of Famer anyway, and he played way less than both the guys you see on this list. Uh, I, I just think Calvin Johnson, had he played a full, full career, which unfortunately we didn't get to see, he would probably be a top three wide receiver of all time. I, I can't put him anywhere off. I can't put him on a bench. I just can't do it. So, A.B., obviously second. Julio, my biggest problem with him has always been he, he can't score for shit. <laughs> Great receiving yeah. yards. Great receiving yards. Look at his touchdown numbers. It ain't so pretty. Um, so, so for me, that, that's how I have to do it. C.J. and A.B. I be so. But you know. You know, sounds like Bice gonna be Homer up in this motherfucker. I'm gonna go with CJ Megatron, dude. Uh, and, and then I'm gonna go with Julio, uh, wow. on the bench and cut AB. The only reason why I'm going with Julio on the bench, well, we ain't gonna even say nothing about CJ because Rich said it all right there. <laughs> but uh, Julio has the, has the most yards per reception ever, yeah, that's true. CJ second, so. Yeah, where he doesn't have any touchdowns, his touchdown record ain't great. The dude gets yards, and he he he's another guy that you can he can you can throw a ball up in in double coverage, triple coverage, and he'll go get it. So he's not no slouch. Yeah. It's just that he's trying to play too long in his career right now. I feel he needs to retire. So he, he he's hurting his own to, legacy. Yeah, his he, team ain't gonna help him none either. He might get a couple balls, but I'm telling you right now. Mm-mm. Yeah, I, 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 I think, yeah. I don't know. I wouldn't say, I mean, I'm not putting nothing off on AB either. I don't give a damn about his uh, off the field annex, or well, actually, it'll be on the field annex too, but he, <laughs> he's a great receiver. And he's just, the problem with him is that he's not, messed him up. I he's not that complete. Messed him up. He doesn't stay with somebody for a long period of time because of his fucking attitude. So when you do, when you have that, and you don't spend time with a team for a long period of time, you cannot be great. You know what I'm saying? Julio spent a long time with Atlanta. CJ spent all his career with Detroit. Those make you great. Whenever you have a player that's great, he spends all his career mostly with the one team that drafted him, that's like fair. Barry Sanders, like Tomlinson. Shit, I would all take the- I would take Heinz Ward over AB as a Steelers fan. <laughs> well, well, I I believe A B when he got that concussion, that was the downfall. And the yeah. Facebook post in the locker room after the Kansas City playoff game was his start of his roll down the hill. Yeah, now, if, he wouldn't have done that, <laughs> if he wouldn't have done that, he'd be the greatest receiver in the four or five years of him still being good and still being with Pittsburgh, and he would have got some saying. high yardage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I agree. I agree. I mean, he's crazy I, now. Don't get me wrong. I mean, right. he's he he. You know, he's, well, what do they say? What do they say when you start off the hero? If you stick around for too long, you become the villain. And that's exactly what happened to him yeah. and Julio. That's the same thing that happened to Julio, right? So, <laughs> you think about Julio for a long time. We think of him as this dominant top of the NFL wide receiver, right? I mean, this guy was going top fifteen every fantasy draft once upon a time. And then you stick around. You stick around because you want to get paid. Your numbers go down. Your numbers go down, and all of a sudden, people see you as a joke, right? So, for now Ooh. on, moving forward, people don't consider Julio a top receiver because they forget how good he once was. Because he stuck around too long. One thing I like about yeah, CJ, exactly. like it sucks seeing CJ retire when he did. Because I would have loved to see another two, three years. But, Absolutely. but somewhere in CJ's mind, he stopped loving the game as much, and he he realized he was kind of slowing down. He was getting hit all the time. The guy was the whole weapon. Yeah, hurt. So mm-hmm. what's nice is we never had to see that degression. Like he was always top of his game from the moment he started to the moment right. he retired. Same thing with Barry. Right. We saw Emmett Smith. Look like shit with the Cardinals at the end of his career, right? So people, for younger people, they remember Emmett as a Cardinal, like, oh my God, he was terrible. It kind of kills your legacy a little bit. Whereas guys like Barry Sanders, guys like you know Calvin Johnson, they retire at the top, and we don't, we can't ever say, oh, remember that one year though? He doesn't have that one year though. He doesn't have that one off field moment or that one tweet or any of that. Neither does Julio really. Julio has been relatively quiet. He just hurt himself by playing too goddamn long, and he looks like shit now. So that's all. When you're desperate and barely able to cling on to a team, that kind of hurts your legacy. All right, y'all, so we're going to get to our next uh, topic. All right, y'all, so who are we more confident in this season to make the playoff? Is it Trey Lance or is it Jalen Hurts? Man, the disrespect on this show. Disrespect. I'm sorry, with Rich Smoke. Who did got the best? More, who got more confidence in the Trey Lance or Jalen Hurts? To make the Jalen Hurts. I mean, 100% Jalen Hurts. I mean, let, let me point out something. Now, obviously, I'm not comparing him to Lamar. I think Lamar is dramatically better than Jalen Hurts. But let me point out something. Do you know that Jalen Hurts had more passing yards last season than Lamar Jackson did in his MVP season? Did anybody know that, by the way? It's a fun fact no. for me. Yeah, because Lamar either. Jackson only got the MVP because of his rushing numbers and his you know his touchdown passes, which were – I think he averaged like – I think there was like 14 touchdown passes that year inside the 15-yard line. Like It wasn't like he was throwing bombs. 
Um, Jalen Hurts could have looked a lot better last year. Numbers were not dramatically impressive by any means. With that being said, you bring in A.J. Brown. You know, Devontae Smith played a huge role last year. Kez Watkins is a guy that you guys might not know about, but he's a great, great third option. Uh, Zach Pascal looked really good in preseason. Um, defense got him. You know, the defense improved as well. And I don't think it's just on Jalen Hurts. I don't think it's just on him. Obviously, eyes will be on him because he, he did have some struggles last year. The problem I have with Trey Lance, I've never been sold on San Fran. I didn't think they were going to make the playoffs last year. They shut me up. They, you know, they, they played a lot better than I expected. I don't see them making the playoffs this year anyway. I, I, I don't. I think they've lost too much, and I'm not a big Trey Lance guy. Um, for me personally, I would take Jalen. It's not a homer. You know how I am with Jalen. I criticize him more than anybody in the face of the earth, so it's by far a homer comment. I just think if you were to put him next to most quarterbacks, I'd probably take the other quarterback. But if I put Hurts next to Lance, I'm taking Hurts. 100%. Uh, be sure. I agree. I think Hurts is a better, way better quarterback than Trey Lance is, and I think Trey Lance is overhyped. Uh, when, I, when I looked at him when they first got him, I was I was uh, not skeptical at that point. I, I had optimism for San Francisco because they still had him preparing underneath, uh, you know, Jake. Uh, Jimmy G. But when they started talking about trading Jimmy G so they can start Trey Lance, and then they went back and they signed Jimmy G, I'm like, uh, they have a confidence problem in Trey Lance. They need somebody that's going to be professional to come up behind him. So that told me a whole bunch right there. Just Very I'm reminiscent like, of Rodgers and Jordan Love. Right. So I'm like, yeah, I don't I, – come on now. Hurt. Hertz is, is, is a great quarterback. I don't care what the hell Rich says. He has the weapons. Now, now this is his year. He, he's got the weapons. He's got the offensive line. There's nowhere but where to go but up. If he fuck he messes that up, then I'm gonna with, I'm gonna be with you, Rich. But I just don't think he's gonna do that. Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't hate him. I, I, I don't hate him. And I told you guys before. I think his biggest problem is just decision making. That's always been what his issue is. It's just he needs to know when to let go of the ball. He does a lot of what Carson Wentz did after his injury, which is a lot of the double pumps. He re he overthinks the, the route sometimes. I think his delivery could be a little bit more smooth. He throws the right guys, but he waits until they're covered. Like you know, usually, you throw the guy open. He throws the guy into coverage. It, it frustrates me sometimes. I mean, that Giants game that we should have dominated last year three interceptions it's a game that could have made a huge impact sooner now we made the playoffs obviously but i mean three less interceptions we made the playoffs probably a couple weeks sooner we would have clinched a little bit earlier but but it's just it, it uh he just has to prove me wrong with decision making running abilities there great runner smart guy uh seems to be a great team player everybody in philly loves him all the players absolutely adore him jason kelsey and them guys i'll, I'll take their word for it uh, I just want to see him make better choices. That, that's really what it comes uh, down to for Jalen. Uh, for me, I'm going to go with Jalen Hurts. I haven't really have seen much Trey Lance to even really judge him like I've seen Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts, I really wish it was decision making. I think uh, that's the only thing lit niche on him. And uh, so, um, and I feel like Philadelphia spent a lot of money, made a lot of moves to make this team a playoff run, running team. It's really all on him and what he does at the quarterback position. All eyes on him. It doesn't been up from here. For him, I, I really can't judge Trey Lance too much. We haven't seen, really haven't seen him. And they really seem, seem to be sold on him because they said, Jimmy G, you done. This is uh, Trey Lance's team now. So they must have, they see something obviously we don't yet. So if we, when this season does start, um, we're able to see what, whatever it is they're seeing. Uh, I think both of them got great defenses. I think that's what uh, got uh, put out deep in the playoff run because of that defense. And I think um, the um, Eagles got some new pieces on that defense uh, along with offense. So it's really, it's really going to be tight to see. It's interesting to see. But I'm going to go with Jalen Hurts as of right now. They got the best chance of making the than the 49ers. Uh, Bubba, we got we got. Well, out of these two picks, I'm going with Jalen Hurts because he's actually – we're going to be facing him here pretty <laughs> soon in a couple months. Uh, Trey Lance is looking over his shoulder, you know, with Jimmy G because that's – that. there's some quarterback uh, controversy that we don't even know about. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because they, they signed him. And, and, I, and I do believe – and I'm not kissing anybody's ass, you know what I mean? But I do think the Eagles are very, very strong, and they probably will take – they probably are going to be going for that division title this year, and I just hope we beat them when we play them. But nope. um, I'm, I'm putting that out there. But I, out of them two, Jalen's is a starter. Trey is still, like, getting his, his training wheels off, and he's always going to worry about – if he doesn't, you know, play good and he doesn't – he messes up, Jimmy yeah. G's coming in at any time. So I'll go with Hurts. Uh, uh, Robbie? Uh, definitely going with Jalen Hurts on this because you know what you're getting with him. Uh, Lance, on the other hand, I haven't seen him play much. And if the Niners were so confident in him, they would never re-sign the Jimmy G back. Mm -hmm. So, so 
Uh, Obviously, there's some tr- there's some uh, uh, there's some trust issues, but I'm going with Jalen Hurts. No brainer, right here. And, and just to make a couple quick just to make a couple quick points as to why Trey Lance is doubted, right? So first of all, what did Green Bay do when they drafted Jordan Love? They they re-signed Rodgers right away for a one year deal. And they're like, oh shit, we gotta keep him longer because Jordan Love ain't it, right? Trey Lance, they keep him. Now, if you think about the guys that this has happened to, for example. Carson Wentz, as much as people bash him now, and he actually had a pretty good year last year. We've talked about this in the past. Carson Wentz was a damn near MVP caliber player in 2017. And the Eagles moved on from him very quickly because they, they were so impressed by Jalen Hurts, right? I mean, usually you can tell when the guy has the effect. Like, obviously, Brady back then, they traded Bledsoe right away, which was a big shock for New England at the time. Like, typically when you believe in somebody, you don't hold on to the other guy for much longer. You know, like Green Bay ran Brett Favre out to start Rodgers because they saw an it factor. They ain't rushing Jimmy G out of San Fran. I heard there was some trades offers out there. They could have got rid of them and saved the money. They kept them for some reason. So, just saying, right. you don't keep. I'm, I'm, like I'm gonna uh, read this comment real quick. I don't know who it was, but I'm gonna read it out so we don't think about it. Um, Facebook user, appreciate you uh, comment in the comment section. But he says, "I think uh, Hurts may be the best quarterback in the league for kids to look up to, but as a player, I don't think he'll ever be more than a solid starter." What do you think about that, Rich? Mark? I disagree with both. <laughs> I mean, like, he is a great guy. I'm not saying like he's a bad – I think there's just too many good quarterbacks that you can look up to. I think Josh Allen's a really good head on his shoulders. And I got to say, Carson Wentz is a really, really good guy. I'm just pointing that out right off the bat. Everybody – like, this guy has kids that are in Philly that are still fans of his, and they're still raising money for him and for all of his charities. People love Carson Wentz. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm not bashing him saying that he couldn't be one of the best guys to look up to. He's definitely one of them. Uh, but I will say, I think he could be, I mean, as far as his ceiling goes, I mean, after last year, whatever, moving forward, his ceiling has to be higher than, Philly's not going to accept solid start, ever. That's never going to be acceptable. <laughs> like, it's, it's just not. Like, I, I mean, look at Donovan McNabb. I mean, the guys started to struggle. Guess what? They booted his ass the fuck out. They didn't care how good he was for 15, you know, for 12 years. They got rid of him really quick. Um, I think he has a higher ceiling than that. With that being said, there is a basement. You know, there is a basement that I could definitely see him falling into. But all in all, I think it's too early to tell. It's his second year starting in the league. It's his third year total, but his second, you know, year starting. I just I can't I can't judge him enough on either one of those fronts yet. Not in a fair yeah. way. Oh, I guess we'll find out more about both of these guys in this upcoming season. Uh, but I'm uh, but I'm not sure I got this question. But you have to listen to the question very very clearly. You're gonna you're gonna uh, build a better offensive trio. Now I'm gonna give you a trio, but you gotta make somebody better. Than the ones I'm sure you cannot use the guys we put up there. So be sure to go ahead and put the picture up. All right. We got Pay Manny, we got Moss, and we got like Damian Thompson. Name me better trio, not naming them. Okay. I'm sorry with B Triller. John Elway. No. Calvin Johnson and Barry Sanders. All right, uh, which on there. There's too many lines for that to be a good trio, by the way. <laughs> which one? Oh, uh, man. You I'm going to go. You, Rich. you know what? Right. You know what? I, I like a big arm. I like a big arm. I'm going to go Marino at quarterback, right? I think people sleep on Marino. Are. Of course I am. I'm not, listen, I'm not a homer. I'm, 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 I'm not going to have one eagle on this list, by the way. There's not going to be one eagle on this list, so kiss my ass. I know that. Uh, there ain't no eagle <laughs> to put on there. <laughs> uh, that's what you're going to put. Uh, I'll, go, I'll go Marino at, Q- at QB. Wide receiver, I'm going to go Rice. Running back, I'm going to go Barry Sanders. All right, uh, Robbie. Uh, I'm gonna go with uh, Dan. Tom Brady, no, Terrell Ter- Owens, and uh, Barry Sanders. Oh, All right, uh, Bubba Brew. Oh, this is a hard one. I'm gonna go. My quarterback is gonna be Joe Montana. Good job. Uh, uh, my receiver because it's and I'm 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 gonna use Rice on that one as a receiver, and I'm gonna go a little Homer. I'm going to go because in his time, he was very, very good, and the Steeler organization is retiring. His number is Franco Harris is my running back. He should have retired uh, that already. Uh, <laughs> for me, right, right, right. I'm all time. I don't know what they're waiting on. I guess they're waiting for the, this anniversary. Well, just this call Jerry Jones and ask him why Jimmy Johnson's not in his circle. Yet. That makes no <laughs> goddamn sense. Uh, <laughs> so for my quarterback, it's going to be Tom Brady. Wide receiver, I, I'll have to do Jerry Rice there. And uh, running back. I was really struggling uh, with this one, but I'm gonna go. Somebody we we um, got the one of the best running backs in the game right now, and Derrick Henry. And this wow. guy, I'm a modern guy. Okay. You know, I, was guy. Wal- I, was I was stuck between I was stuck between I was stuck between I was stuck stuck between Walter Payton and Barry Sanders. Those were like my. Oh, uh, I didn't. I you know what? I was thinking. I did. Boom! I didn't even. This is you hard. You did present. It's fine. <laughs> it was pretty, really good. Barry I'm pretty sure it wasn't. I, um, he said it wasn't a hard pick for me. He put a bunch of lines on there. You want to put Scott Kevin Mitchell on there, Marino, too? Rice, and <laughs> okay, okay. Stop. Oh, he just copied my three. Look at that. 
<laughs> All right, y'all. So we're gonna go to the end of the week. I kind of uh, messed up a little bit early in the game, early the day, but that's okay. It happens. Uh, so oh, wow. the end of the week is Jalen Ramsey. Godly man, I, I, I had so many, but we tossed and turned with this one, man. This man like burnt turns. I'm going. I'm calling him burnt turns or uh, Ramsey. I tell you, he played a lot better, man. Cause this was bad. He gave. Like I say he, he allowed a perfect pass ready. He targeted seven times. He allowed uh, a six reception for 200, 124 yards. Excuse me, and two TDs, man. He just really, really was off his A game. He was on the F game this entire time. This was just bad, man. So you, sir, are getting L a week for this week. All right, be sure what you got, man. Oh, yeah, we got to definitely go with Jalen Ramsey. Uh, you allowed a perfect rap passer rating of 158.3 in the first week. What? And you're supposed to be a top top five corner? I mean, yeah, he he the L of the week. He he under the L of the week. If there was something that was under the L of the week, he'd be that. <laughs> All right, Red Smoke. I got two L of the weeks. Number one's yeah. John for insulting my man Von Miller's haircut. He was trying to put Von Miller above Jalen Ramsey for the other week. There's no way. No way. I do agree. That haircut all kinds of messed up. I'm Look at that. I'm yeah. getting better at this control of my language. You see that? I'm really proud of myself right now. Uh, really <laughs> messed up haircut. But that boy got burnt. I mean, I, I, you probably smelled singe hair all over that guy darn field because that boy got burnt every time he got – like I said, the only way he could have been worse is allowing seven catches instead of six. That's the only way he could have got worse. That's it. I mean, that's it. That's literally it. Uh, by far – People like to bash Eli Apple all the time. People like to bash all these other corners. By all means, when you call yourself number one, which we've heard him call himself probably 3,000 times since Jacksonville, you got to play better than that. There's no such thing as a bad game like that. We all have bad games, right? There's no doubt. Like Everybody has a bad game. That's but a bad not game. That, bad. That, is, that is beyond bad. That is absolute turmoil. Like That's not good, especially your first week of the season. I mean, there's no way. You can't come in right at number one. And play like number three hundred and forty-seven. You just can't do that. You can't. You can't. You're lying. I, I'm sure they uh, probably have a practice squad player in, 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 with the Rams that probably could have did better than that. High right? school player that probably could have played better than him. Honestly, right. I've seen some high school kids in my local neighborhood that, that are pretty damn good. They would have loved to take flag, that flag spot. football uh, corner by the better. I mean, than him. I mean, all you got to do is just not give up 124 yards, bro. Come on, man. <laughs> like, at at I, some uh, point in that game, they should have just sat him at the goal line, just run back and forth across the goal line the whole time. That's all you got to do. Remember, that's bro, it. You got to end of the week. Well, uh, Ramsey, I like the toast display. That's very, very awesome there. Um, but uh, me being a Steeler fan, and this week with the debacle of our depths in quarterbacking, because everybody around here, when when Mason Rudolph got named number two in the cut and paste debacle of 2022, they were ready to pitchfork and, and go down and look for Frankenstein down there in Pittsburgh. Like, <laughs> I, I don't know why an organization like we have at Sorry. the Steelers or any organization shouldn't be equipped to actually know who, who in the hell is in the depth of quarterback or any position they do that before they actually release that. That was the biggest blunder I, I have seen, and that was a big controversy up this way. And I just think I, – I don't know what Tomlin was doing. Like, before he looked at it, he goes – well, maybe we should get this right before I start talking about it. You know what I mean? Hey, intern, mm. cut and paste this. It doesn't take a genius to figure that out. So to me, that was the biggest bullshit of the week. I mean, I know it's covered. doesn't matter. But it just makes us look like we have egg on our face and we're incompetent doing business the way we should. That's that's my bitch of the week. All right, Robbie? Uh, definitely Jalen Ramsey after that game. He should be either contemplating retirement or change his position to safety. <laughs> <laughs> right, hopefully he does the better in the season. It's, it's week one, saw them slide, uh, nope. hangover. But but uh, yeah, he, 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 he was letting Stefan slide all game. You might as well let him slide too. <laughs> yeah, hopefully you do a lot better, Ramsey, because this you you burnt us Ramsey right now. I can't call Jalen right now. I can't call Jalen right now. All right, so this con this conversation you about to have next, I know, gonna be one of the longest ones. Hopefully not too long, but we gotta do it, man. The question I got for everybody. Is Lamar Jackson making the right choice gambling his future in Baltimore without a contract? I'm going to start off with Robbie. Uh, hell no. He's an idiot. <laughs> he only ain't got an agent, does he? No. Yeah, uh, his mama. His mama. Well, that's he all you need in life is your mama. Mama and God. That's it. Don't, yeah, don't, don't, I'm, I'm going to have to say, he yes, he's definitely – He's definitely gambling because what if he gets injured and what if he tears ACL or anything and he don't got nothing to fall back on? No contract, no nothing. He's out. So he's definitely stupid. All right. Uh, Bubba Brook? He's not the sharpest knife in a drawer, and he probably will not last the whole season anyway, and he never does. So I 
he he he's a Raven, um, and he's going to get beat up anyway because TJ is probably going to knock him out of the game because he can't face the Steelers. And I'm just doing that because I am a, a homer and a yunzer, but um, he's just dumb and he's not looking for his future. Uh, Rich Smoke, let me go last. Rich Smoke, let me go last. Rich Smoke, let's go. Come on, Chuck. Come on, man, you kill me. I think it's obvious that he's actually smart here. I don't, I don't know why everybody – listen, I know we all don't like him, but I think it's extremely intelligent, and I'm going to tell you why. If he would have signed the contract that Baltimore offered him, which, again, we can argue about big-time money because obviously we all get paid regular wages, so of course a million dollars does a lot of money. As an athlete, though, it's a pride thing. It's your position. He's watching everybody else get paid, right? So, for example, let's say, for example, on this podcast, me, John, and Brian, we're the three main hosts here. Everybody's getting paid. I see Brian get a raise for, you know, $100 million. John gets a raise to go over that for $150 million. And I'm like, yo, let me get like 175, 200. I think that's fair about this going up and up. Why not? Somebody goes, now nah, we'll give you 100, though. That's a slap in the face. That's a little bit of a slap in the face, right? So, so in my opinion, when you are, when he is a former MVP, right? Not that long, not that far removed. Now, obviously, he's been a little on a downhill spiral. Let's be honest. If he was somebody else, I'd say maybe somebody's always going to want him. Somebody's always going to want him. I think I think Miami's going to have a short lease with two, a short lease with Tua moving forward. I think he would be a good fit in Miami, to be honest. With you. I think that offense would be great for him. Um, I, I, I think there's a lot of teams that he fits into really well. I, I don't think it's a bad idea. He's probably going to get paid more anyway because the, the Ravens are going to be desperate. They'll probably try to franchise tag him, which means he'll get paid more than whatever they offered him anyway. So the franchise tag alone will pay him. I, I think it's an extremely smart move, in my opinion. And I don't even like. All right, uh, I'll go. Um, this the, he is gambling. He is. It's my. I get what you're saying. But what if us? What if he gets hurt? He People are still gonna want him. All up, People are still gonna want him. You can negotiate. I get that. You can negotiate through him now. Like, do you bring the, the price down now? Because what if he's not what he was well before the injury? Because some everybody body is different when it comes to injury. Depending on what the injury is. You know what I'm saying? I would hate for him to go out there, risk risk it all, and try to prove himself and get hurt in that now. Because now the Boston Ravens now can be like, hey, man, we don't know if you ever get back to that form you once was. So now we don't want to have to get the money. Now, I do agree. Somebody's always going to want him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What if, what, but we don't know what his number is. I also heard the, that the, the rumor about Baltimore offering him that money wasn't true. Not about how true that is. They offered him way you know? less. Wait, 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 wait. So we don't we don't know what he's asking for. We don't know what it is. I think he deserves what he's asking for. If you ask me, I think he is Baltimore, and what Baltimore is, is moving forward. I agree with you. I want to say because Huntley looks you. good, but he's not Lamar good. Yeah, he's, that's, 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 that's that. You got Huntley, but he ain't Lamar Jackson. What Lamar Jackson can do, you know what I'm saying, with his ability. So I feel like it, it is a much. It is a gamble because what if you get hurt, you got no security. Like Robinson, you have no. Probably say you have no security if he gets hurt. But I said I get what he's trying to do. He's just betting on himself. He whatever it is, he's just trying to prove that he is worth whatever the money he's having to be talking about. But it is a gamble, man. You gotta think about it, man. Andrews does come with the sport, man. And if he gets hurt, man, it whatever he's trying to gun it for, it can potentially hurt him in the future. Rumor is though he got offered not a very great number at first, right? right? So right. so in his mind, what he's probably thinking is if I get hurt and let's say a team offers me a hundred mil, it's just about the same god which is a low contract in the NFL now, like hundred to one hundred twenty five ain't all that anymore. I think he'll still get that even with an injury. I don't it's not now if he was offered like three hundred million, he declined that, I'd be like, All right, bro, you're a moron. Like, that's a stupid. But mm. I mean, obviously, I don't think he would have declined that offer unless it was pretty bad. Especially when it comes to it's a pride thing. We're all men. We all want to feel right. like we're recognized. We all want to be paid accordingly. And I, I just think that even if he does get hurt, I, I think it's the right call. Take the shot on yourself. Listen, nobody else is ever going to believe in you as much as you do. Go out Absolutely. there and do your thing. Go out there. And listen, yeah, it's risky, but it's hey. risky though. You can't. But, he already, risky. So, but let me already. ask you. Let me ask you guys. Is he getting any big, huge endorsements and anything like that for some extra? I don't know. Cash? Baltimore, I'm, yeah, I believe. So. Yeah, Baltimore, Baltimore, Baltimore so. just because he, he's playing there. Other than that, he's not a national. You know, he's not getting the Pepsi and the Pizza Huts or anything like that. Again, right? that, that's part of why he needs the bigger contract, though. So let me ask you a question, Rich. Let me ask you a question, Rich. Let's say he goes out and do what he's doing right now. I'm yeah. on you. I'll play devil's advocate. Yeah. Let's yeah. say he does that. What if he gets hurt and he ends up like RG3? He can't run no more like he once was, I, and he declined. Well, then, then, well, you still going to try to give him big money? They, they, his name Lamar Jackson? I, I, think, I think the difference is they, they're, they're a lot different. I mean, I think reality-wise, mm-hmm. Lamar's way faster than RG3 ever was. I mean, yeah, RG3 was a great runner, but, I mean, he was never as electric as Lamar, no, right? And RG3 was really, really questionable with decision-making. Whereas Lamar, does he always make the right call? No, but I think he's a lot smarter of a quarterback than a lot of the guys in the league right now. I'm not a huge fan, but I think he is very, very intelligent when the ball's in his hand. So I will say, I get where you're coming from, and I definitely respect that viewpoint, but I will say, I, I, I think he's talented enough to overcome that no matter what it may be. Obviously, it might hinder his performance a little bit, 
but I still think hindered Lamar is better than probably more than half the quarterbacks in the NFL right now. And that's just the honest truth. I mean, when you're in a league with guys like Davis Mills as starters and Daniel Jones as starters and guys like that, I'm sorry, but there's no way in hell Lamar Jackson's not a starter. I mean, that that's just I mean, again, you know that you know that, yeah. And again, like if he gets hurt and like the Giants are desperate enough, let's say the Ravens cut him for whatever reason. I'm sorry, but the Giants will pay him 150 million all day. They, they, they're, they're, <laughs> well, Houston. So with Houston, I mean, these teams are so desperate. He'll get paid just about whatever he just got offered this offseason anyway. I, I, I don't see him getting offered but a Rich, low enough. Amount. But Rich, all these desperate teams next year when the quarterback draft class is so good, these these sucky teams will draft a half decent or yeah, a but franchise he would, quarterback. So I would he'll already. Take- well, he'll already well, announce by then whether he's going to resign. At that point, he's already going to announce. Salary though, that has nothing to do. I'm, yeah. Let, let me tell you. So. And let's, uh, let's let uh, Bishop uh, answer the question. Yeah. Go ahead, Bishop. And he is he is a hundred percent healthy, or when he's even 90, 85, 75 percent healthy, he's still a top five quarterback yeah. in the league. <laughs> he's still a five. He's still a top five quarterback in the league. Yep. And let me tell you something. Yeah, you y'all y'all say, well, what if he gets hurt? Being being hurt is part of NFL football. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you something. If he plays eight or more games and gets hurt, if they don't give him the money that, they, that, that he wants at the end of the season, I bet you there are going to be like 25 other teams that are going to ask Absolutely. for him. Absolutely. I agree. I'm telling you. I, and he could be – he could have an ACL tear. Let's say he gets an ACL tear it's and he's going to be the next season. <laughs> I bet you damn well 25 teams are going to still want his ass. It's, I hope it does. Yep. Lamar is an eccentric player. He is one of the most – Gifted athletes at that position. Okay. The problem with it is, is his team. Yep. You got a you got a damn head coach, or not a head coach, but an offensive coordinator who so. wants to run him like he's a running back. That is not his game. He showed that in his MVP season that he can be accurate with the pass, still run the ball effectively, and and, and have the running backs actually play a part on the offense. Now, granted. This year was or last season wasn't a great season for the running back core, but still, the dude can throw the ball. He's got it. He he is a good. He's broken just about almost every NFL record in his first three years in doing certain things. Yeah. The guy is extraordinary. I'm going to tell you right now. If Baltimore don't pay his ass next year, and we still got golf, I'm going to be telling. Look, trade him for golf. <laughs> <laughs> Who won it? Who won it? <laughs> I'll take Lamar Jackson. I ain't got no problem with that. I'd be the same way. I ain't gonna lie. I would. He's got a good tight end. His tight end helps him out almost all the time. Yeah, but they also didn't put a lot of the talent around him as they should have either. I mean, that's one team where they fumbled the ball a lot. I mean, they just. Somebody's playing with the microphone. I don't know what it is. Yeah, that was weird. Bubba, that's you? I don't know. Yeah. Sorry, it is. Oh, that was you. Okay, okay. <laughs> we good? Yeah. yeah. Still hearing it. Yeah, we got some technical difficulties, folks. <laughs> yeah. Not my, yeah. my choice. Not me. All right, so we're going to move to our next question while he gets a uh, connection to Justin. All right, child. The question is, will the Bengals get back to Super Bowl this year? I'm going to start off with uh, B. Shriller. Nope. They got the talent. They, the, the, I think their defense is still falling short. Until until my until that defense takes a step, you can you know you could be offensive, but you got the Buffalo Bills in that AFC. And if that that defense continues to be hot like they are, I felt like that's last year that they if they beat Kansas City, they would have been in the Super Bowl against the Rams, not Cincinnati. I, I think Kansas City showed a lot of weaknesses on their playoffs. Buffalo. Would have beat if Buffalo would have beat Kansas City, they would have beat Cincinnati. Cincinnati, we wouldn't be talking about this because Cincinnati wouldn't have been in the Super Bowl. I think Buffalo would have beat the Rams too. <laughs> yeah, they would have beat. But I Buffalo, Buffalo is the best team in the in, in the league in, in the AFC right now. Might be the best team in the league. And I just don't see Cincinnati getting past them. All right, Rich Mo. I, I fully agree with that comment. I, I think the, I think the Bengals will get back there at some point in time, or at least close. I think they're definitely going to be a. I think they're an AFC championship game threat. I think they can definitely get that far. 
depending mm-hmm. on seeding. But I have to agree. I think Buffalo is the AFC team to beat. And I, I mean, and I said this last year that if Buffalo would have won that game against Kansas City, they were winning the Super Bowl. I mean, that's all there was to it. I mean, mm-hmm. that was the last real pit stop they had. Yes, I'm not bashing the Bengals. I think the Bengals were a great football team, great Cinderella story. It was great to see them accomplish what they accomplished. But I think there's no way in hell guys like Eli Apple and them guys would have stopped Josh Allen and that, and that bombardment they would have faced. Um, I, I, I think the same thing for the Rams. I think the Rams would have struggled just as much as they did last week as they would have in the Super Bowl. Um, so yeah, I, I have to agree. I don't think I don't think this is it. I think maybe one day. I think one day they might get back there if everybody can if they can keep that core together, uh, which I think is gonna be harder to do because there's gonna be a lot of money getting paid out to them wide receivers uh, over these next couple of years, and Burrow's gonna get paid. Um, but I would say I, I just don't see it this year. I don't see either one of the teams from the Super Bowl last year making the Super Bowl this year. All right, for me, uh, it's going to be tough, man. I think the Bills is the team. I think that should, should, should be there. I think, I'm pretty sure everybody's eyeing to be there from NFL experts, uh, us uh, uh, podcasters, uh, uh, fans all over the world. I'm pretty sure. I believe it's the Bills. Yeah, I think the Bills is real tough for the Bengals to uh, overthrow the Bills, man. I, just, I see that happening for the AFC uh, Championship. I'm not sure what that is. So, man, real bad. Yeah, that's, I don't think that's me. But... Are we sure? Everybody good? I'm good. Yeah, I'm yeah, good. All right, so uh, I guess maybe I can see the conference championship between the Bills and the, and the Bengals. I, that's a possibility, but I don't know if they'll get past the Buffalo Bills, especially if they have Eli Apple at that number one corner. <laughs> His digs. It's going to be a long day for Eli Apple. But, um, so it's going to be very, very tough, man. But I don't think it'll be a long day. Um, Bubba. I, I, don't think, I don't think they're going to repeat, and I don't know who's going to be the top AFC team as of right now because it's too early. Uh, anything can happen. I mean, we saw Thursday night Josh Allen, but what about if he goes out with an injury or something? You, you never know. I think hard to say. Yeah, that's, I don't think it's – I don't know. It could be me. Well, when you were talking, it was really clear, then it came back right after you were done talking. Yeah. <laughs> All good. We'll figure it out. To blame stuff on the guest. Look at you. That's okay. Yeah. It, it, sometimes it's always me anyway. <laughs> that's what they say I, about sure. me. Uh, uh, Robbie? Uh, no, Buffalo's going to Super Bowl this year. Wow. He's, he's, he's getting tried out and fucking said, there you go, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so be sure to have some uh, five questions to touch your knowledge. So I'm going to give it to him, and we're going to get that started. Don't open Google, anybody. Right. Well, Keep- what I'm going to do in this round, five questions. I'm going to pick one of y'all to answer these questions. All right? So nobody's going to know. So, since that Bubba is our special guest on this show, oh, man. Triple B. Okay. Triple B. Name at least five players who have rushed for 2,000 yards in a single season. How many? Five. At least five. Derrick Henry. Jamal, Jamal Lewis. Yep. Uh, Barry Sanders. Yep. Um, Eric Dickerson. Yep. One more. One more. Uh, um, One more. More recent. Uh, I, I didn't. I said Derrick Henry, right? Yeah. There's one more too. Can I okay. give him a hint? No, no, no. Don't give me a hint. Uh, I, um, um, uh, come on, Bob. Come one on. More. Can I give you a hint? Uh, no, no. I don't like hints. Um, uh, <laughs> um. I don't want you to have an aneurysm either. Eddie George. <laughs> nope. Okay. No. I, but it was another Titan. It was another Titan. It was Titan, another though. Titan. It was Shit. another Titan. Damn Chris it. Johnson. Chris Johnson. There you go. <laughs> Chris Johnson. One more. That's, I, that's what the hell I was going to give him. And by the way, nobody more. and nobody told me these questions ahead of time. So, 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 so besides Sabaya. those five that you mentioned, OJ Simpson was another one. I was yeah. going to say him. Darn it. Terrell Davis was another one. And everybody oh, forgot did. Adrian Peters. I didn't that, 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 that was one, one I had too. That was one of mine. All right, number two. I'm going to give this one to Rich. Rich Name the only person to play on three consecutive Super Bowl championship teams. 
Oh, I thought I had it right off the top of my head, but I don't. Um, man, that's tough. Three con- three different consecutive Super Bowl teams, huh? Yep. I know. I, no, I know. Three consecutive gonna, Super Bowl teams. I want to know who it is as soon as you fucking say. It. That's what's bothering me because I know I'm going to get it wrong. But uh, damn, three consecutive. I had somebody in my head. I forget who it was. <laughs> um, that's tough. That's tough. Three consecutive Super Bowls. I think I know, but I'm not really sure. <laughs> I had somebody and I lost it. Completely lost it. Um, I'm not. I don't know. I'm. Not, I. I don't even remember who the hell my guest was. Anybody? Anybody? You got to throw a name in there. Um, Jim Kelly. No. Who? Three different teams in a consecutive season. Oh, different teams. Oh, oh, my fault. My fault. No, 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 no. Three consecutive Super Bowl championships. Doesn't that be three different oh, teams? Three oh, consecutive oh, Super Bowl championships. Oh, oh. oh, LaShawn McCoy. No. That's who my guess was. I know he won two in a row, but I wasn't sure about the third one. He oh, Gregor Blunt? Nope. No. He had two in a row. McCoy had two in I'll a row. I'll give you a hint. Stop thinking in this century. Oh, wow. Well, you mean decade, right? You mean you mean this? No, this century. Uh, twenty third, yeah. Troy Aikman. Nope. Winning. Well, he wasn't. He wasn't in three. He wasn't in three in a row. So it's definitely not a quarterback. We all know that because no team's won three in a row. So that's not a right. quarterback. It's it's going to have to be a skill player that got transitioned over <laughs> quite a few times. Yep. Um, I, I, I'm going to know who it is as soon as you say it. That's why I'm pissed. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I was going oh, no. Was it Larry Brown, uh, the, the, the corner from Dallas? Nope. <laughs> nope. I'm done. Uh, I don't know. Anybody in the comments get it right? I don't think so. No, somebody said Shady just like I did. Yeah, Kevin said Shady, but no. He can go to give me 20, 24 seconds. Uh, Ricky Pro. Ricky Pro, hell no. <laughs> he was Urban, I don't know. <laughs> Isaac Bruce. I don't know. Uh, no. Nah, I don't know. We're not gonna. You might as well just call the timer off. Oh. Okay. It's going to be Ken Norton Jr. Get I, that. That. I would have never Three, gotten that. Or San Francisco and Dallas. I remember who he, he is. Twice I wouldn't have gotten Dallas that. once. Yeah, I wouldn't have gotten that though. Yeah, I wouldn't have gotten that either. I was thinking right. Dion for a minute, but yeah, I was too. I was like, <laughs> I knew it was only two in a row, so I knew there was no point in going Dion. All right, so on that same note, I gave you a lot of time for that one. Um, all right, so let's see. Let's see, JC. See if he can answer this. I'm gonna give you 30 seconds, JC. Who has the highest career? Uh, no, who is the first NFL quarterback to top 4,000 yards passing? The first to do it? I think I know. Yep. Hey, first NFL quarterback to top 40,000 yards passing. 40,000? I just said 4,000. 40,000. Oh, 40,000? 40, yeah, that's what, that's what Oh, yeah, restart that. Uh, you ain't going to get it any damn way. Probably not. <laughs> um, that's your prime question. I would probably ask. Yep, I was right. I was right. I was, I, I was right. I was right. Was it John Montana? No. Nope. My guess I'll give you a right couple there. more guesses. Dan Marino? Nope. Nope. Can Penny Manning? Nope. I'll give you a hint. Way before any of those. <laughs> can, I, can I tell you who it is? Because I knew who it was. Can I say who it is? Yeah. Johnny Unitas. There you go. I was stuck between him and Tarkenton, but I was like, nah, Tarkenton didn't have that many, so I went with Unitas, and that's, yeah. I thought uh, my guess was Namath. Yeah, How about Namath next? How no. about Namath next? I was going to say Stahlbach. John had a list of 37 quarterbacks ready to go. <laughs> I named four. <laughs> uh, you you have a 40. Don't do that. Don't do that. You have more than me. <laughs> so, Robbie, who I has the highest career completion percentage in the Super Bowl history at 70%? Oh, bullshit. John Elway? Nope. Fuck John Elway. Tim Tebow. <laughs> Tim Tebow. <laughs> I just love bringing him up as much as I can. Fuck Tebow. Love Tebow. Uh, Brad, Brad Johnson. <laughs> Brad Johnson. <laughs> Hell no. Joe wow. Nate, uh, 
Was it Namath? He's a he's a he. I'll, I'll put it to you this way: Hint, he's a player that he, on a team that everybody hates. That Randall. Cool. That could be anybody. I know who it is. Yep, I know who it is. Then. Was it actual quarterback or was it on a trick play? <laughs> I don't count. It's an actual. Come on, I would have said Antoine Randall. Well, on a trick play. <laughs> All right, can I get? Can I get? Oh, oh, is the timer up? Yeah. Aikman. Yep. You go with it, but anyway. Oh, uh, out of my it. life, I don't have my phone. John, what's always happening with my phone? Where, where, where's it always at? On the charger, because that shit dead. <laughs> All right. So well, let's see. Since Bubba is our guest again, we'll we'll go ahead and and, and give him two questions here. Oh, Jesus. Um, name two of four players. Who are tied with the second most Pro Bowl selections at 14. What was that 50. question? What was that question? Name two or four players who are tied with the most Pro Bowl, the second most Pro Bowl selections at 14. Two players tied with 14 Pro Bowl, Pro Bowl selections. Oh, I know this. I'm going to say one is Reggie White. And. Eh. I like your guess, though. <laughs> uh, w- Walter Payton. And, oh, my God. I got an idea, but I don't know. I'm going to go with one more because it's three, like I always do. I'll go with Jerry Rice. And, oh, my God. Uh. Oh, I'm counting down. That's uh, that's it. Uh, uh, so, so I, we got Rich. I'm done. Be looking. One player, Rich. You know he's looking. You know he knows already now. You know he is. I'm not looking. I have no phone upstairs, so I don't know how I'm looking. Um, oh. Go uh, ahead, come Jimmy back. C. Come back. Come back. Come back to me. I'm not sure. Ray Lewis. Nope. Robbie, what you got? Tom Brady. Tom Brady's got 15. He don't count. This is second most. Uh, 14. Peyton? Peyton? Bam. That's Peyton. one. That's, That's one. one. Peyton Man is one. Marvin, ha- Marvin Harrison? Mm-hmm. Nope. I know. What the hell was that for that Hall of Fame induction? I was just watching two days ago all the Hall of, uh, Hall of Fame inductions for the last three years. Offensive lineman. I just can't think of what the hell his name is. That's good. There's an offensive line that's been in 14 Pro Bowls. Not Thomas, is it? Joe Thomas? Nope. 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 I'm gonna make it up. I don't know who that is. Yeah, that's not me, guys, because I unhooked everything. I don't think I'm gonna get it. I know it's off at the line, but I just can't think of who it is. I thought I, I don't know. Um uh, wait a minute. What about Jesse Slater? Nope. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm gonna give you a hint of the remaining three. One of them played for Kansas City. One of them played for Houston. I know both talking about the yeah. Oilers. I know both. And one of them played for Dallas. I don't know that. All right, I'm gonna make one guess on the on the Oilers one because I know who it is now. That's the offensive lineman. That's gonna be Bruce Matthews. You got it. Nope, Larry Allen's wrong. And you said what? So Kansas City, and who's the other one? The one the other one played in Dallas. I don't know the Dallas one. Yon, Yon Stenaru, the kicker. Nope. <laughs> Derek Thomas. Pro Bowls, really? I'm done. Protein Pro Bowls. Fourteen Pro Bowls for a kicker. That's a lot. That's a lot. Derek yeah. Thomas? Man, nope. Your show's hard. All right, so you all I can think of, questions. Kansas City, all I can think of that were good players is, uh, it's not Priest. I know it's not Priest. He wasn't good that long. We already said there. Bruce Matthews. Nope, not really Rofe either. Uh, <laughs> all right. Who, what, what, offense or defense for the Cowboys? Uh, Brian Waters. Cowboys Brian Waters. Was, huh? Brian Waters. Who, what, where, and when? 
The offensive tackle for the Chiefs, Brian, Brian Waters. Nope. This player right, that gonna, played for Kansas gonna, City also played for Atlanta. All right. Tony Gonzalez? Damn. That's who I was thinking. As soon as he said Atlanta, that was it. As soon as he said Atlanta, I knew who it was. Yeah, I yeah, I knew who it was as soon as he said Atlanta. I was just getting ready to say, I think the, I think they considered him the greatest KC player of all time up until Mahomes. Yep. but. But then I wasn't sure, and I was like, I don't know if there's that many Pro Bowls, though. Then he said it later. I'm like, there's only one other person. He's still probably the best, better kid until, until Mahomes does, you know, more. More. Gonzalez yeah. will probably be, still be the, the loving guy. But I don't the know. other Can, guy I, is Kelsey, Merle Olsen. Though. Yeah, I wouldn't have got him. Dallas. I wouldn't have got Olsen. I yeah, got him. he was – yeah, it's an old, old one. But he was in four, 14 Pro Bowls. Yeah, Brady was in this conversation, too. But since he won, you know, he was in his 415 Pro Bowl. So that's all the uh, questions. I got three out of four. I'm happy. All right, dude. Surely he has a hard ass question there, but I think we did it pretty okay. <laughs> yeah, you did I, all right. I, I yeah. suck at this yeah. game. I just want to point that out that if you don't know your NFL trivia on this show, you're you're shit out of luck. And I'm like over oh, <laughs> ten. Well, to be fair, right, to John. be fair, I probably could have answered maybe three of these four questions. <laughs> yeah, me too. I would have gotten three or four. I wouldn't have gotten the uh, the what's my call it the one that I didn't get. I, I wasn't getting well, three. five questions. Should I All right, John. Final question for you guys. All right, let's do this. All right, y'all. Listen to the question very clearly. Which quarterback will struggle without their former number one receiver? Is it Aaron Rodgers or is it uh Patrick Mahomes? I'm gonna talk about Robbie. Mm, I'm gonna say Aaron Rodgers on this one. Uh, uh, Bubba, Aaron Rodgers, most definitely. Uh, for me, I think it's gonna be Aaron Rodgers. I think he's really gonna struggle, man. I think he really is. Um, which mode? I'm gonna break your rules, doing it, man. But I gotta say neither. I think both of them are so good. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I think their numbers might dip a little bit, but I think both of them are so good they're gonna overcome that objection. I don't think that's gonna be a problem. I be true. Really, you're gonna really ask me this question? <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. Really gonna ask me this question? You see you're part of the panel. I gotta ask you the question. Jersey I'm wearing, right? You know it's gonna be ass <laughs> ride. Well, I don't like ass ride anyway. <laughs> but the point of the matter is, he doesn't have Patrick Mahomes still has weapons. Aaron Rodgers don't. Lazard, is your, do it Lazard is your number one receiver. Get the hell out of here. I, I think I mean, it'll be just good. Even even we, with we, the we, fact that Aaron, it's Aaron Rodgers, I give him we, some kind of damn respect, but he ain't gonna make any of those receivers. We what Patrick we, Mahomes? We has. said that we said that before though too. Look at Jordy Nelson; he made Jordy Nelson great. Um, I mean, he played really well we with said Jordy, Jordy Nelson. Wasn't time. great already. We said Devontae Adams wasn't great already because once because once Jordy Nelson, Jordy Nelson left, he was absolute garbage with the Raiders. He was terrible. Uh, he had a good season that. with the Raiders the year after. One, he just had one a, good. He had the quarterback he had. That's all. Yeah, but so see, does the that thing mean Devontae Adams is going to be crap same, when he goes to Las Vegas? With, same thing with James Jones. James Jones had a terrific career in Green Bay. It was not that great after he left. I mean, there's a lot of guys you could sit here and go through the list. And I mean, Rodgers makes players better. And guess what? So does so does Patrick Mahomes. Well, he said he wasn't very happy with Rob Supercross so far. So we'll right. but, but yeah, but you know what? I, I, I think he'll overcome it. I don't think it's going to be much of a problem. I mean, Tunyon comes back healthy this year. they got two great running backs over there in Green Bay. I think they're going to be fine. I think they're going to run the ball a little bit more than usual, but I think they're going to be just as good. The offense is going to suck this year. The de- they're going to depend on their defense. I'm telling you that right know. now. I like the running game in Green Bay. Running games will always lead you somewhere. Your running game sucks, too. <laughs> it's not about a passing game. That's all it is. All it's not a bad is. running game. You got to have an offensive line to play in their offensive line. Aaron Jones and so. Aaron Jones and AJ Dillon finished in the top uh, top fifteen in rushing yards last year. They're on the same team. They're a good players. All right, you guys. We're gonna get into our uh, favorite get topics. Huh? <laughs> we'll see what happens one day. Uh, you know, everything uh, concludes by the end of the season. Well, but I'm probably sure we're gonna talk about that. So, so, so Jay, Jay, yo, big dog. Who What's are you man? giving a seat to today? Oh man, you know what it is. We got something called sit your ass down. And for this week, who will be sitting their ass down this week is gonna be Michael Irvin and Mad Dog. Now, Mad Dog for saying uh, the Dallas Cowboys are going to Super Bowl, and Michael Irvin claimed that the Dallas Cowboys will be going undefeated. Now, at this point, you two fellas need to stop. I'm sure Jacob ain't gonna like this, but it ain't me. It's the fan base. Right. I want to start by acknowledging the Hall of Famer Michael Irvin, two-time Super Bowl champion, five-time Pro Bowler, and the Dallas Cowboys legend. Uh, he also is the co-host for, for the first take, but I got a problem with you. It's every single year you keep saying the same old thing. This is our year with no results. You've been saying that for the last 20 years. Ain't you tired of that? 
Hell no. Nah. Because you tweet stuff like this. You say if the Dallas Cowboys clean up their penalties, they'll be chasing the undefeated 72 uh, Miami Dolphins. If they got a number one offense, clean up their uh, penalties, they'll be chasing the uh, 90, 72 Dolphins. Did I say something crazy? Yes, you did, actually. Really? The 72 Dolphins? Boy, you really off your rockers. You only won two big playoff games in the last 20 years. And now you're going to say undefeated with all the current problems you're dealing with right now? Uh, uh, it's pretty questionable take. And Edmonds from Stephen A. Smith, you guys fall again. But let's move on to our mad dog, Chris Russo. All right, another um, co-host with First Take. I'm glad we talked on First Take. Mad Dog is an American uh, sports on radio personnel. He's best um, known for former uh, co-host of the Mike and uh, Mad Dog uh, sports radio program. I ain't so fond of you, to be honest, but this right here is a no-go. Let's listen to what Mad Dog had to say. Because of Super Bowl hangover, and I don't take the um, uh, the Packers. Where am I going? You know who's going to win the NFC? Saints. Who are you doing? Oh, the my Dallas God. Cowboys. Oh, oh, my God. God. <laughs> they can't believe it. Oh, my God. Oh my God. Goodness. God. Cowboys. Why? I love it. Oh, the Why? Why? By default, you don't really believe in the quarterback, that. The quarterback, the coach. I love the owner. They have a schedule that's man. The owner to win the Super Bowl. Uh, he, he's going to have spirit. They're going to get the left tackle back. You know him. He, and just said, he just said one plus one is three, and you got to believe. Yeah. So out of all the teams, you said the Dallas Cowboys to rep the NFC. Have you lost your mind? It seems like you letting that Madden uh, simulation go to your head just a little bit. Now, I can't say it's, can't say it's all their fault because the uh, Madden only had uh, – um, the Cowboys reaching the NFC and Dak winning the MVP. Now we all know that's cap, but you further you went further than further than them by saying they're picking them to win the Super Bowl. Uh, Stephen Smith uh, was out of there after that. He didn't want to hear that no more. I got right. one word to describe you after that one. Both of y'all actually delusional. The moral of the story: y'all ain't nothing but an accident waiting to happen. Be sure to tell them what they need to do, man. Man, they need to sit their ass down, both of them, flat on their ass, sit down. Don't get up. Uh, Rich Moulton. It's the Cowboys, bro. I'm so used to it. So, like, listen, when you're in this division for, for your entire life, this is what we come to this is what we come to expect in Philadelphia. Okay. They always talking about themselves and how great they are. It's just it's just Dallas Cowboys. It's it don't surprise me. Out of all they the teams always- that out of they all the teams, talk that like that. every year they talk like that. Oh my like god, that. they've been the favorite to win the Super Bowl for the last like thirty-seven years in a row. And guess what? They haven't won one since nineteen ninety. What six? So, come on, man. Come on, man. Save that Be shit sure. for somebody else. Put your ass down. Be sure. It, come on. It's, like Rich said, this is going to be a repetitive thing throughout. I'm sure everybody on this panel is Dallas. And Michael Irvin, you know, I don't know if he's back on that stuff again. But, uh, yeah, he always says stuff that's crazy about Dallas. Not Talking about he, they're chasing the 72 Dolphins. Dude, if I was sitting there and I heard him say that and and I was next, I would have fell out my chair dying laughing. I just I said, dude, drug test him immediately. Please drug test him immediately because he's just, uh-uh. Hell no. Nah. Dallas you is guys- not going to Dallas might be good. I'm not saying that they won't. They got they got the talent. They got no coach. The coach sucks. They got their boss by the, their their team. You know the the owner. He might as well be the coach. So, what's the point? You know what I'm saying? Do you I, think I that they think use this stuff like in all these talk shows for sports NFL podcasts like you guys and I to actually talk about stuff like this to throw the. No. the no, no, they felt like delusional. they felt delusional. like nobody was talking about Dallas for too long, so they had to give us something to fucking talk about. It's okay. Dallas Cowboys. Exactly. <laughs> okay, well, I, sometimes they just throw stuff out there just so they want to chime on in some ratings on on their ESPN shows. They're trying to raise the ratings for Dallas Cowboys. That's what they're trying to do. They don't <laughs> shut the hell up because Jerry uh, Jones still got all them in his pocket. Bubba, what you think about that, man? Uh, I, I, Michael Irving's funny, and he was good in. Uh, what was that movie uh, with Adam Sandler? And other the Longest that, Yard. Yeah, The Longest Yard remake. Yard. Yeah, he played a tough guy then, and he plays a tough guy on ESPN. And he got three Super Bowl rings, but he did a lot of partying back then. So he wasn't that he tough on the field. Still. He's doing a partying now. Yeah, he he's probably still partying. He's, he's got nothing else. Right, and he's got right. nothing else to talk about. So, 
Yeah, it just seems like it, it, you hear this every single year. This is all year doing all that sweating and shit. This is all year every single year. You're giving, <laughs> Sweat, all you doing yeah. is giving Stephen A. Smith all this ammunition to get on y'all. Y'all actually waiting to happen. This happens every single year. And now you're talking about the 72 Dolphins. Are you serious? Like, you lost your mind? Come on, man. It, 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 it's good for TV, I guess. If, He's if, smoking if, some good stuff, though. He's if, the Patriots, if the Patriots couldn't do it in 07, Dallas damn sure ain't doing it in 2022. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Right, the Rebel was the last best chance we saw. Robbie, there? Robbie. Oh, I think he muted himself because of the static. Robbie, you muted yourself. I can't unmute you. Yeah. All right. We'll get Brian. Oh, wait. There we go. There's Robbie. There you go. Robbie, here? Yeah, I'm here. All right. What you, you, you take on that? Uh, what was the question? Oh, about the Dallas Cowboys. What Mike. they had to say. What Irvin and them said. Um, Michael Irvin should definitely get checked, like for his some CTE or something. <laughs> he definitely wants something. <laughs> <It's a CTE. coughs> like I, I like to have some. What AD. kind of stuff is he taking? Like, give me some of that. Right. He, he's, the one that, he's, he's the one that was sharing some party supplies with uh, AB and made AB AB lose his goddamn mind. Might be. They off their rockers. I'll tell you Dallas, that. One, you know, T.O. went a little cuckoo down there in Dallas too, man. That's my quarterback, man. That's my quarterback. <laughs> All right, so I think we're gonna get next week against the uh, Pickums for this week, man. Uh, we're back doing that again. I'll be the first one to let you know. I did a bad job on that last year. So I'm going to have Richard in charge of another thing when it comes to scoring. I did a pretty bad job. So I'm going to have Richard take care of the other Oh, well, people. keeping track of the games? Yeah, there you go. It's always me with the documentation, man. What the hell? All right. So um, for me, I have um, I have Buffalo over uh, the Rams already. That game already uh, happened already. Uh, um, tomorrow, I have uh, Atlanta taking uh, taking that game win against the, uh, the um, Falcons. Oh, no, excuse me, over the Falcons, excuse me. Then I have um, San Francisco over Chicago, uh, Cincy over Pittsburgh, uh, Miami over um, New England, uh, the Jets in the upset alert over Baltimore, Jacksonville taking the Washington Commanders game, uh, Carolina beating up Cleveland, fuck Cleveland. Um, I got the Colts <laughs> um, beating uh, Houston. I got the Philadelphia Eagles beating Detroit. I got uh, Tennessee beating uh, the Giants. I got Minnesota beating um, Green Bay. Uh, Kansas City beating Arizona. Chargers beating Las Vegas. Uh, Tampa uh, beating Dallas. And on the Monday night game, I got Denver smashing Seattle. Uh, be sure who you got this week. You said smashing Seattle. <laughs> I got uh, Saints beating Atlanta. I got San Francisco beating Chicago. They might smash the hell out of Chicago, uh, no matter who's quarterbacking. Uh, I got Pittsburgh actually upsetting Cincinnati. On, it's one of my upset picks. Got Miami beating New England. Uh, Baltimore beating the Jets. I got Jacksonville beating Washington. I got Carolina beating Cleveland. I got Indianapolis beating Houston. I got Philadelphia beating Detroit. I got the Titans beating uh, the, the Giants. I got Minnesota beating Green Bay. Kansas City whooping up on Arizona. I got the Chargers beating Las Vegas. And I got Tampa Bay beating Dallas. And Monday night, yes, I do have Denver smashing the Seattle Seahawks. Hi, right, Rich Moke. I got uh, New Orleans over Atlanta. I got San Fran over Chicago. Cincy over Pittsburgh. I got Miami over New England. I got Baltimore over the Jets. I got Washington over Jacksonville. Carolina over Cleveland. Then I got Indy over Houston. Philly over Detroit. Tennessee over the Giants. Green Bay over Minnesota. The Chiefs over the Cardinals. Chargers over the Ra- over the Raiders, Tampa, and then I have Denver shellacking the uh, the uh, Seattle Seahawks. <laughs> Everybody's got a different word. <laughs> right. uh, uh, Robbie, um, what we say? I got the I got the Saints over Atlanta, 49ers over the Bears, uh, Steelers over Cincinnati, pay, uh, Miami over New England. Baltimore over the Jets, Washington over Jacksonville, Carolina over Cleveland. Sorry. Uh, I can barely see these. Where was that? Damn. Where would you look? I got uh, Indianapolis. Sorry. Yeah, Indianapolis Uh, at uh, Houston. I got Indianapolis on that. Um, Philly at Philadelphia at Detroit. Uh, I'm actually going to pick Detroit in that game. You're on drugs. Uh, yeah, well, I, I'm hoping, man. Upset. Uh, so Tennessee the over the Titans. Giants. Yeah. Green, Green Packers over Packers over Vikings. 
Kansas City over Arizona, Chargers over the Raiders, and uh, Tampa Bay over Dallas. And I got uh, I got Denver winning on Monday night. Oh, you uh, didn't use yeah. a word. You uh, like bubble bubble word on that. All right, baby, brew. I'm gonna go. I'll, I'll go. Uh, New Orleans over Atlanta. I'll go. Uh, I'm gonna. This is gonna be crazy. I'm gonna take Chicago over the 49ers. Wow. Whoa. Um, Whoa. I don't have any money on any of these. Um, I'm definitely going Pittsburgh over Cincy because I've been taking them forever. Um, and I'm gonna go with uh, New England over Miami because I don't want uh, the Patriots to uh, lose before they come to Pittsburgh and get their asses beat. Um, I, I guess it's Baltimore over the Jets because that's the way it's gonna be because the Jets are terrible. Um, I'm going to say, I'm going to say Washington over Jacksonville because Jacksonville is just Jacksonville. Um, Carolina over Cleveland because Baker Mayfield will have the comeback uh, story this Sunday. Definitely the Colts over the, I'm sorry, is it the uh, Texans? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Colts over the Texans. Um, I, I like Dan Campbell in the way he, he, I just, you know what? This is another... Rich, you're gonna hate me for this. No, uh, I like the underdog. Uh, okay, uh, I'm gonna go with Detroit Lions and some kind of miracle Sunday in a close game, upsetting <laughs> it's the Eagles. Be a miracle. <laughs> Jared Goff's gonna get smoked. Okay, and then we're going. Uh, we're going Tennessee over the Giants. Uh, Minnesota over the Green Bay Packers. Uh, I'm gonna go Can- Kansas City over the Cardinals. I'm going to go. I like Justin Herbert. I'm going to the Chargers over the Raiders. Uh, Tampa Bay over Dallas. I'm going to go. I'm going to go with all the controversy that Tom Brady's been doing. I'm going to take the Cowboys over the the lovely Tampa Bay Bucks. And Whoa. Denver is going to shellac. Oh, there you uh, go. Took my work. Seattle. <laughs> I, uh, so Bobby, you're fired for not having a on, word. On next week, uh, we'll uh, reveal our, <laughs> our, 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 our results. Richard will uh, call those out and uh, the score who leading. Oh, God, mine is terrible. Season, so we'll be doing pick <laughs> all season long. So, um, And anybody said, in the comment section, feel free to message one of us. One, of, Listen, y'all can involve yourselves in this, too. I mean, right. I'll, keep a tra- I'll keep track of it. <laughs> so, I mean, if y'all want to message in your, your, your picks every week, do so. We'll bring it on the show. And if you uh, whoop our asses, we'll call you out at the end of the year. <laughs> All right, so that does conclude the end of the show. I'm, I'm gonna start about giving special uh, guests. Thanks to uh, Bubba Brew for joining us, man, and the Triple B experience, man. We do appreciate you being on the show. You were great. You were fantastic. You are oh, phenomenal. You uh, oh, uh, my mom. Well, I don't. Uh, I don't know a lot of the trivia stuff. You guys are. You did. You did pretty good. You did great, man. Uh, uh, man. Robbie as well for joining one of our moderators uh, for joining this week, man. I do appreciate you being on today. Um, so what I'm gonna do for uh, Bubba Brew, I'm gonna give you 30 seconds to give a shout out with the extra clock. Once to start the edge clock on your right hand corner on my right, your left, depending on how you, where you at. Oh, I'm and, cutting uh, a promo, okay? I'll give you a 30 second okay. shout out, man. Where do you say go? Okay, I, I love cutting promos like old wrestling style. I just want to give thanks out to the Extra Point Podcast guys. Thank you guys so much. It was an honor for me being on your show and talking football. I love this time of season. And yes, I'm the Triple B, Bad Bubba Brewer in the Triple B experience. Giving you guys a lot of Steeler stuff on the Triple B, Black and Gold Dynasty every week, and also Unscripted, where we talk pulp culture. Check us out on YouTube, Spotify, and all the social media outlets in the world, guys. Thank you so much. <laughs> all right, man. All right, man. It's been a pleasure, man. It's been a pleasure. All right, so I'm Thank gonna you. let um Bubba Brew and uh, Robbie go down. I'm gonna do the final thought. We're gonna get up out of here. I do Thanks appreciate again, you, both, man. I hope to see y'all soon, man. All right, we I'm the big dog that's with smoke. Be sure, though, man. We have every single Saturday at four o'clock, man. We have another special guest next week. I'll make that announcement on Friday once it's being confirmed. But um, I'm gonna leave y'all with the final thought. Final thought is the first step to getting what you want, what you want is having the coverage to get what you need to get rid of. So um, I'm going to leave it with that. And um, that's all I really have until next time. I want to thank all of you guys, uh, all the viewers, comments. Just a little um, mention here. Just a little yeah. mention off, off, off football, but off pro football. We are Marshall. Just beat number eight Notre Dame 26 <laughs> 21. <laughs> at home, I just want to say at Notre quick, Dame. I just, I just want to say real quick that obviously, Robbie, we appreciate you coming on. Bubba, it's been a pleasure. I'll be seeing you week eight on your podcast when the Eagles go up against those Pittsburgh Steelers uh, for, the, for the Keystone State Square off up there. Um, always a great time. Happy to be back. 
been it's been a pleasure, guys. Uh, that's about yeah, it. Man. I think we're ready to rock until next week. Am I good? All right, let's well, it, man. We out, y'all.